We good to go then. Yep. 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 Yes. Right. Let's hope I don't mess up this thing I practiced in my head only once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you can start your recording if you want to, Richard. Uh, yeah, I just started already. Fine. Hi, We're recording. Good. <laughs> I've been recording for exactly one minute and five seconds. What an asshole. <laughs> uh, let's stop the tape and start over. No, we're keeping it in. <laughs> okay. we're, doing it, we're doing it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> All right. Let's proceed Thanks. to have 30 minutes of arguing about the tape at the start of the tape. <laughs> let's make sure to read our scripts. No, that's my line. Uh huh. <laughs> Wouldn't be a group, a campaign of us if we didn't goof around in the first minutes of anything, really. Yeah, I know. All right. So, uh, we open on just darkness, and then uh, a faint voice in the distance of an echo of a cave saying, Tunri, Tunri, come on, get up, Tunri, and then. Uh, light as the person who we're seeing from the perspective's eyes open. Uh, there's another dwarf standing over, shaking him as um, he's half buried in a pile of rubble. The dwarf shaking says, Tunri, come on, come on. We have to go. Why isn't it playing the music? You guys hear? Nope. Uh, I was going so well, too. Hold on, I'm <laughs> refreshing. Uh, it logged me out. <laughs> Let me... I'll re -log it says too. that it's playing. Oh, yeah. It logged me out, too. Oh, shit. Now you guys are going to hear all my build-up to it. Yes, my ass recording. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm Rich is recording. Yep, log me out. Okay, now I'm hearing it. Okay, well, now I need to stop it. Yep. Well, crud, I'm not hearing it. Should I log back in? Yeah, I think everybody was logged out. F1 refresh, you'll see that it logged you out. Yep. This recording's off to a fantastic start. Yep. <laughs> That's not like it's our first recording. Kenneth has secretly been recording this for years. The world's least exciting sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually all secretly famous, if you didn't know. Uh-huh. However, we have been cancelled multiple times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if we ever tried to Twitch stream, we'd get 20 minutes in and just immediately get taken off. Yep. We'd find a way. <laughs> Yep. You have somehow managed to violate terms of service that we haven't even written yet. <laughs> From the time I am started, just for you. <laughs> I think about um, the time we started murdering babies in Dark Heresy. I think that would be about. Yeah. That's very in canon. And what are people other than big babies? It's my right. life motto, really. Just justify those deaths. So are we, uh, are we all back in? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Try this again. Okay, there we go. Yes. Um, the dwarf who we're seeing reacts with um. Seven goes, hi, I'm, I'm up. What? And then the fourth goes, come on, Tenry. Tenry, we have to get out here. We have to get to the blade quick. And then there's just like a shaking as the entire cavern that went shakes and other dwarves of family are running past. They all get up and they start running as quickly as they can. We see gouts of black fire echoing down the cavern from some unseen force behind them. Uh, a dwarf next to the one that we're seeing the perspective of gets struck and they fall to the ground. Do you ever say anyone get hit by like white phosphorus? It burns like their insides too. That's mm -hmm. happening as well. Uh, a towering dwarven statue of a, of a king or something um, comes tumbling over as this entire now that we see as a large hallway of Dammer Hall is shaking. Apart. Everyone is making a mad dash towards the gatehouse, the bridge to the outside modern day kingdom of Corsiconia. Everyone trying so desperately to get out of desperate patterns. The dwarf received the perspective of the other one says, Did you see what it is? He was doing it. Uh, the other one shakes said, No, no, Tony. It's just it's everywhere. It's going on. Come on. There's no saving it. The city center's lost. We need to get out quick. Uh, soldiers are time, but just one gout of flyer just completely just wipes them away. Everyone is getting close to the front gate, just swinging open. The, cloud, the crowd is still. They're not moving forward. The uh, tunnery begins shoving on the doors of the crowd and goes, come on, 
Why isn't anyone moving? Come on. And he starts shoving his way through it to the front of the crowd. And then he sees it. The bridge to the outside collapsed. There's no escape. Doom closing in behind them. Hundreds of corpses know that they won't be able to get out of Dameron. It's a mountain valley. The only certain deaths. No one can take that way out. One by one, every dwarf slowly turns around. Few raised weapons and shields, and all at once, a cry goes out from all the beings again. For Kith and Clan! And they charge forward, only to be annihilated by black fire. It is at this point that Nelgrim wakes up. How much of that did you guys hear, by the way? Because Cope said he was yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I got almost all of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we got most of it. There was just a couple times when you were doing the narration that it would I think fade the, in and out, like yeah. your microphone the, was breaking up. The music is playing in your browser too, and so your microphone. Is how is it picking? Because I have a microphone strapped to the side of my head, so I don't know how it's <laughs> picking it up when it's going directly into my ears from head. I don't know. All I know is when the music stopped playing, you became suddenly clearer. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. But I, I heard. I think we all heard yeah, enough of it to piece together what you faded out. Yeah, so. that always happens whenever I try to do something dramatic. It's annoying. You're, you're yeah. fine. Um, yeah. We heard like at least I heard pretty much everything. It's just like a couple times when you were talking back and forth between a couple people. Oh, sometimes I stuttered too because I didn't write dialogue. <laughs> well, like no, this would actually like fade in. Yeah, and out, yeah. Um, it's good. We heard, I think we heard the gist of it. Yeah, of, yeah. Black fire annihilating the cities, things toppling down, the, the bridge, bridge being blown down. out, yep. and then an annihilation and black fire. Yep. So Charge in. First thing oh. Noel Grimm would do is uh, pull out his uh, journal and start jotting down his uh, his dream, making you, as detailed notes as he could recall. You've had this dream before. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not super often, but you maybe have it once or twice a month. This exact dream. Is it always the same? Uh, sometimes it's from a different dwarf's perspective, but it's always genuinely this scene. Okay, and he oh. is taking extensive notes of it. And Yes. Before you left Kazakh Krag, you did consult with a cleric of the ancestors about this. Mm. Um, you are kind of the first um, grudge blade to happen since the ancestors fell silent maybe 200 years ago. So their best guess is that it's their way of conveying instructions to you. Okay. But as you look around your campsite, you're uh, camped out in the field way in the northern Corsiconia, you see there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I imagine uh, what's uh, Taskill was the one that probably had last watch so we can do morning prayers as the sun's just rising. I imagine Fergus mm-hmm. is probably sleeping in. Trails. Um, yeah, he would have been sleeping like trying like under a tree or yeah um, behind a rock away from everybody a little bit. Yeah, you have you, there's a large enough rock that you can be behind this particular section of Corsiconia, which is just near the edder, uh, edge of the dire beast infested uh, Crickswald, um, is mostly a flat, grassy, almost a step uh, because the cold air off the mountains. Uh, the vast bulk of the world spine is rearing up before you. You're going to be reaching your destination to meet up with Thrum today. You're maybe four days out uh, from the last human settlement that you left. Um, would Freya have met Thrum before? I leave that up to you guys. Cope said that his character roamed around a lot, so it's up to you. Like I know I, I met him when he, I was younger, mm-hmm. but it's been a long time. I know basically Thrum and Taskle probably know each other. Yeah, they absolutely have met each other before. <laughs> you might have briefly met him before setting out on this quest. Because originally what it was going to be is that the long beard of Clan Hall Forged had a vision about reclaiming Dammer Hall and Fergus sitting upon the throne. So you all were put together along with Thrum, who showed up having a similar epiphany, and Thrum was going to go ahead to scout out the location to the Underdark that he had heard about, and you guys were going to go to Corsiconia to pick up um, Fergus, because that's where he was last seen. But um, So Thrum left like a week ahead of you. 
And like two days before you were about to set off, Fergus ended up coming to your home in Kazakh Crag in Avaland. Prophecy! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he got roped into this quick, and then you guys had the journey overland and then across the bay crossing there, which shaved so long off your journey. Even if you're not fond of um, water, it made the journey to this point be about two months rather than close to a year. Would y'all be cool if we did like a quick character description of what everybody yeah. looks like? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Please do that. We hadn't started a big game in so long. Yeah. So I think that was you volunteering, Coop? Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. The only one that's um, that. Actually, that's <laughs> um, let me flip over to Bio because I know I wrote kind of what he looked like. Um, a normal sized dwarf, been a little with time. No, he's, he's hunched a little naturally as if trying to keep a low profile, dusty clothes. And a muddy, natural odor like dirt permeate through him. Squinty eyes that make you believe he doesn't trust you. A loner hell-bent on... Oh, wait, you wouldn't know all that. Well, whatever. A loner hell-bent on reclaiming Damer Hall and restoring the glory of the dwarves. He believes the drow were to blame for whatever befell. Da-da-da-da-da. Um, he carries a big axe. Uh, usually walks with a walking spear. Uh, wears a cloak. A lot... A lot more skulky than you would imagine your typical dwarf. Um, on uh, Fergus's end, um, he's not dressed like any of the other dwarves. He's more in the style of human clothing. Um, he has a long, he has a full cloak that kind of covers most of his body when he walks. That is um, a dull yellow. It started off a lot brighter when you first met him, but over the course of the couple months, um, it's just kind of slowly faded. It's obviously a cloak not meant for travel. Um, his facial hair is done up more like a Spaniard style with like pointed edges on the, the mustache and it's shaved um, um, low. So where um, he doesn't have any facial hair on the sides of his face that he routinely keeps up on shaving down. And it is a lot smaller than the everyday um, beard of the dwarves. Um, he tries his best to kind of keep his hair combed, but seeing as how he lost his comb back in the boat, He's just doing it by hand, so it looks a little mangier than it usually does. Um, he carries with him a couple knives, a small sword, as well as a bow strung across his back. Um, and he's a lot thinner than the most dwarves you've ever met. Nogrim's the epitome of uh, dwarven pride. Wears, uh, wears his long hair and long beard in uh, ornate braids that are kind of fastened at the end with a with uh, beads of iron and steel, uh, all kind of bearing uh, uh, dwarven runes and insignia. Um, Half of his face is uh, tattooed with more uh, dwarven iconography uh, and dwarven runes. Um, You know, he sports, you know, medium armor and uh, wields his uh, war pick with with pride, as it's as much of a representation of uh, dwarven culture as it is a weapon that he uses. Um, that's basically his appearance, you know. Just beyond that, uh, yeah, just strong, muscular dwarven beard uh, build, but uh, been <clears throat> not exactly the most sociable. He's often lost in thought um, up until this point, often seen going through his dusty tome or jotting down notes of one kind or another, or just researching in general. Um, but when he does talk, it is pretty foul mouth. Uh, fuck is his by far his uh, favorite swear word, and he threads it through just about every sentence he can. But other than that, he is uh, friendly enough, albeit uh, abrasive. Um, so Freya is uh, so she wear she's wearing scale mail, but uh, and she has a couple of weapons strapped to her, but none of them seem uh, that imposing. Instead, probably. The first thing you notice are the amount of sort of mismatched tools that she's carrying on her, as well as the fact that she really only has one bag, because um, she came very last minute on this voyage. Basically, at the very last point that she could have decided to go with you guys, she did. Um, she also carries around, I imagine, what is now a book of schematics in this iteration. It could be a book of dwarven rune magic. Yeah, something like that. Because I imagine your stuff is probably a little less 
clockwork technical like gnomecraft and more like dwarven metal urgy and runes yeah 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 um which is seems very significant she does not understand very much of it at all she has a very base understanding of what she's looking at that she learned um during her time working uh with the lore master um yeah so she's she's tending to travel Rather light in her bag, but uh, she has a lot of things sort of strapped to her armor. I suppose that just leaves me. So Taskel's on the tall end of the dwarves, probably taller than the rest of the group by at least maybe an inch or two. Uh, he's still very dwarfy, strong muscles from working the forges and all that, making equipment. Uh, he's got. Scale mail is probably... I don't know, he's got chain mail, actually. From the stat sheet. Um, the clothing, though, is... Functional, but ornate. He's got an apron on that bears the emblem of the forges of... Whatever the town it was that they came from. Kazakh Crag. Kazakh Crag. And the... Uh, done up in his beard are several ornaments depicting... Father Mountain and Mother Fire... Or whatever the other one was. <laughs> the ancestors. <laughs> yes, and the ancestors. Uh, serious expression most of the time. But he tra- he, he isn't interested in this quest. Particularly uh, what uh, Nogrim is constantly recording in his books and stuff. Um, can't really think of anything else at the moment. <laughs> now, uh, Taskel, before you mm-hmm. set off, the clan Longbeard uh, gave you a coffer, like a small, like a jewelry box, but for other items. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said that uh, it contained a few things that might help, and to open it when your party is together and about to set off into the Underdark. So you probably have that with you. Okay. Let me make a note of that. And uh, Loki, how old's Nolgrim? I know Freya and Fergus are on the younger side, right? I think he's... I can't remember how many years I had him, but he's right there alongside Fergus. Mm. Yeah, Fergus is around like a 20-year-old or so in Dwarven standards. Mm. Also, I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, I think we all <clears throat> stars for, like, Pathfinder. And I looked, and Pathfinder and D&D Dwarven ages are different. Yeah. I just I, I just say the average of what a human lifespan would be, so yeah. I say Fergus is in dwarven years around age twenty to twenty one. Yeah. An old ass dwarf is around three hundred. <laughs> so Um, yeah, but I put H down as forty three, but that's in dwarven years. That's so. about twenty. Yeah. Um, in uh it's human So we have three provide. young as shit dwarves <laughs> and two old as shit dwarves. Yeah, I've got mine down as 121. Yep, that's about right. Okay, boomer. <laughs> yeah. Well, it says you're you're like okay, you're 20 boomer. adult age at um, 50 dwarf years. Yeah. So y'all are green. Oh, this will be fun. It will. So yeah, that's the everyone's descriptions. Uh, Nelgrim, you waking up? You jot mm-hmm. stuff down in your book. Mm-hmm. Is the camp slowly getting up and moving at this point, or it's up to you guys? I imagine so. But well, once he gets done jotting it down, he's gonna be in the mindset of getting back to business and kind of start packing up his stuff and say, "Come on, lads, let's get going. Don't have much. Got a full day ahead of us. Let's stop fucking around." Um, Fergus would definitely be the last one awake. Um, it would get to the point where like you'd have to go and wake him, but every time you get within like ten to fifteen feet from him, his head would always shoot up. Like, I'm up, I'm up, <laughs> I'm okay. Um, that is my little silent alarm spell that I have in when he goes to sleep. <laughs> sure you are, you rock slug. We're getting out. Why does everything have to be a rock? Why can't it just be a slug? <laughs> And he would slowly just grab all of his shit and start moving. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Um, um, probably as we oh, okay. no, you go ahead. Probably as we uh, get up, 
and uh, start to like uh, start to head our way out. Uh, Freya would go up to uh, Noel Grimm and she'd say, "What? What? What is it you say you do again?" I listen to the ways of our ancestors and I seek out the glory that was lost. But I guess for the purposes of this expedition, I'm a archaeologist. Um, she uh, puts down her bag and you hear a loud thud as again it is the only bag that she has taken with her. Mm-hmm. And she digs around in it and pulls out the uh, the large dwarven rune book and opens it up and shows you a page and says, "Do, do you understand any of this? I, I was given to it. I was given it by the lore master before I left, and I'm trying to uncover the secrets of dwarven magic." Nolgrim will uh, see, seize the book from your hand and start uh, flipping through it, see if he could make heads or tails of it. Uh, give me a knowledge arcana if that's what you're doing. Uh, knowledge arcana, natural one. This is completely over your head. <laughs> I mean, it's exactly what she says it is. Dwarven mm-hmm. room magic, that's clear. Mm-hmm. But this is 0% uh, of what you know. Because mm-hmm. the magical metaphysics is something I'm always very interested in any setting. And basically, mm-hmm. as a warlock, uh, you don't actually know how to use magic. Mm-hmm. The magical powers you have is an innate part of the ancestor's power harbinged within you or housed within you you just call upon it as innately as you would lift a sword mm-hmm. you act technically speaking from a uh mechanics versus lore perspective you have the spell power of a level 20 warlock right now but you just don't know how to use it mm-hmm. so arcane text like this is mm-hmm. super over your head mm-hmm. Mulgrim will uh, flip through and probably recognize a few of the runes because that's fair amount of way studies, but it's, it's kind of like looking at letters and trying to understand a sentence when you just know letters um, and say, uh, a lot of this is familiar, but I cannot make heads or tails of what it is trying to convey. It is not my field of expertise, I must admit. She'll, uh, she'll pick the book uh, back up out of your hands. <laughs> Um, shuffle it back into her bag and she'll say alrighty then I just wanted to make sure there weren't any shortcuts <laughs> well, I would be more than glad to peruse through that if you need further help again at a glance it's much over my head but I am certainly fond of learning new things especially of the old ways I understand some of the simpler runes but I they're the more complex ones that hold deeper forms of magic that I'm struggling with. Well, I'm sure we could crack it together. And then she'll, uh, she'll go off and get ready to leave. Yeah. As you guys press onwards uh, throughout the day, it's still, you guys get started really early, probably around 5.36 in the morning, because that's what you do when you're traveling overland. Um, as the sun is rising up, you're right at the base of the mountains at this point. Um, and you can just make out the faint wisp of a campfire on the side of, not like all the way up a mountain, but it's mm-hmm. like maybe a good 30 minutes hike up like the slope. And it takes you guys about that much time to scale up there. Uh, you have to take kind of a zigzaggy pattern from where it's too steep. And as you guys reach the point you see a large cave opening dipping down into blackness and beside it is kind of like a a gnarled looking tree without um leaves that's kind of like half grown over a rock to kind of form like a natural little hollow and uh out in front of it is an extremely uh fuzzy yak if you guys haven't seen a picture of a highland yak i recommend you google it it's a treat I'm pretty sure I've seen these, but I'm Googling it anyway. Yep. Yep, I've seen yep. these. I love these things. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's a yak that has emo hair. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, you wouldn't understand me, Mom. I'm yak. <laughs> and, and even in this setting, it's just called a Highland Yak. Mm-hmm. Um, that's casually grazing on the 
somewhat unpalatable scruff on the edge of the mountain here, but it doesn't seem to mind. But sitting by a small campfire is a thrum, kind of probably poking it, I imagine. Um, he's not obviously in the entrance into the Underdark, because any explorer knows never to sleep in an unexplored cave, and doubly so if it's an entrance to the Underdark. He'd also have in his left hand a little white rock that he's just kind of rubbing furiously, and occasionally you see him brushing on his cheek or something. And without looking up, he'd say, a little noise isn't bad, but Father Earth, I expected to darn parade. And dancing ladies, you all were causing such a ruckus coming up here. <laughs> and here I was just about to say, I'm going to roll a stealth to try to not be noticed by him when I'm coming up. <laughs> <laughs> he, no, it, there's, it's like you look down and you see you guys. He probably saw you for yeah. at least 20 minutes. <laughs> he has a side line on you. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me, that's the first time I've ever seen a dwarven cow. I have to say I'm certainly impressed by it. I like the aesthetics. <laughs> Referring to the yak, of course. Oh, I was, thought them were fighting words. Yeah, her, that's Esky right there. Esky will be leading the charge for us. Who is who? Who are these two? Are you gesturing towards? Yeah, and with that, he'd get up and start walking over and point to uh, Freya and Nolgrim. No Grim will uh, step forward and clasp his hand in a very dwarvenly macho fashion and say, I'm No Grim Runic, the uh, impromptu archaeologist on this venture, looking forward to discovering the old dwarven runes that lay below. Mm. Uh, Freya will kind of step back and wait for Taskel to introduce her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this wee one's my daughter, Freya. She's. Uh, investigating ruins and decided to come with us. Hmm. Well, keep your last where it belongs in the rear with the gear. Let's uh, head on. Our wagon's packed up. But uh, a word before we go. I don't know that any of you have done much travel down below, so let me just say, you all know me. You know how I earn a living. Slinking through tunnels like these. There's bad things down there. Bad things. Not like owl bears and tigers. No soft furry creatures down there. No, sir. Those porkas down there will rip you to pieces. Some will tenderize you first. Others will swallow you whole. You want to live long? You let me say what goes. Otherwise, you'll all be guano on the ground before the night's over, and I'm not going to join you at Etsy as an either. Get your gear. Let's go. Looking forward to you taking point. Well, it was nice like meeting I said, you all. I turned to leave. <laughs> Nogram was seized him by the back of the collar. <laughs> it was worth a shot. <laughs> you got the throne waiting for your lad. Now's not the time to run. Uh, is it a bad time to say that I don't like caves? <laughs> Nogram will give you such a just irked look like, like you just said the most idiotic thing he's ever heard. <laughs> I guess, yes, I've seen that by many other doors. Let's just go. <laughs> and he just followed the group. So you all had in, or did you want to look in the coffer first? All oh, right, the coffer. You just told me that. Yeah, hold on a second. I got the item from the long beard. Yeah. Yeah, fish out this little box. He said to open it when we were all together and about to go down. Mm -hmm. uh, when you pop it open there's three items inside uh, there is what looks like a small scroll rolled up there is a small um, like palm sized jewelry box that's got another smaller note uh, tied with a little string to it and there is kind of like a jeweler's bag that looks completely full, um, about fist-sized, probably one stone. Uh, it's kind of velvet with drawstrings pulled on it. Hmm. Well, I suppose I'll start with the scroll myself. Alright. I should give you all a handout there. Mm -hmm. Oh. And I also, while I was writing this, decided dwarf text goes right to left, because why not? But I wrote it um, 
readable left to right. I just oh mm-hmm. shit! When you said that, I was like, I'm not gonna be. No, no, no. <laughs> Plus, there's a translation under it if the font isn't working for you. I I vote for a Kenneth dramatic reading. <laughs> you don't have to do the accent if it's easier. Yeah, maybe I'll try. Mikin, the importance of your quest cannot be put lightly. Our kind is a fading ember in this world, and many of my peers fear the day. Or once great works are not but the ruins to be explored by the races of men. I am well aware that there are some within your number who question if our way of life need to be saved, and some of you question the wisdom of who should sit upon the mithril throne of Damerol. I bid both parties patience, and to remind you that it was Father Mountain himself who set you upon this quest. This journey will test each of you, I am sure, but it is most important to remember that no great feat of the dwarves were accomplished alone. When the road you must walk becomes seemingly too long and hard to endure, look to one another for strength. No child of the smith can know failure so long as they stand with kin, kith kin and calm. Clan? And clan. Calm. Calm clan, yes. I spell check this so many times. (laughs) 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 I will busy myself with gathering all of Clan Hullforged while you are on your quest, so that when you reclaim Dammer Hall, you will have no shortage of hands to restore it. Now go with heart, my kin, for... other guide your steps as mother and ancestor as alike watch over you. Cyrus Tempersteel, long beard of Clan Hall Forged of Kazakh Crag. I feel like I went a uh, little Spaniard there in the yeah, middle. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine it's just Fergus finishing the sentence over you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was all written in Dwarven, by the way. I just. <clears throat> Oh, so Fergus can't read it. I think no, he can. He's a little rusty. <laughs> I was about to say, does everybody at least speak yeah, Dwarven? Yeah, by default, everyone knows Dwarven. Okay, good. Dwarven and Common. I like to think Fergus is very rusty on it. I also speak Elvish. That, yeah, that, that so. makes sense. Uh, there oh. actually is a pretty good elf population in Corsicani, so that's unsurprising. I, I had asked what races were like common there, and that's why I chose it. Speaking of which, the further away we get from Corsicania... He's like, I mean, I'm I'm with you there. I'm not really wanting to be there right now. Gumbo, where are we on the map? Could you give us a little dot? Oh, sure, no problem. I'm tired of seeing this broad expanse of sky overhead. No, I just, we got the box with another note. Oops. See that little red dot? Yep. yep. That's about where you are. Cool. Um. Okay. So, uh, you check the note first, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a note. I didn't write this one out. I'm just going to say it. it. It's basically instructions. It's saying how inside this latched box is a clockwork thrush of gnomish design. Uh, for those of you who didn't read The Hobbit, the thrush is a small little bird. Uh-huh. Um, that it has a magical gem in the heart of it. Uh, that is paired to a gem that the Longbeard has. And that when you open the box, the mechanical bird will fly out and will unerringly find uh, the paired gem. And that's how hmm. they will know that you have reclaimed Dammer Hall. Yay. <laughs> nice no clay seal, but it'll do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Listen, <I'm> like... <laughs> I'll tell you guys this. The original rise of this didn't explain how your clan would know that you succeeded. So <laughs> good, good, yeah, well. good job on the impromptu. Mm-hmm. They probably yeah, had, had a plan for it later on, and then they never finished the book. They just keep saying check book four. Jokes on you. Doesn't exist. Got it. You, no, no. You just gotta figure out how to shift into a parallel dimension where they finish the KP. Yes. Please send twenty seven ninety nine by check or money order each month until book four arrives. So, yeah, you know that uh, from the instructions that if you open up the box, the bird's going to go flying. So, <laughs> don't open it. It's got, it's got like a little um, latch. So, like I op- if I open it now, can we go home? <laughs> I think people would be very angry at you for that. And we are I mean, going home. That's why we're here. And we got this bag with what appears to be one large gem in it. Mm hmm. 
Um, as you open up the drawstring, a faint glow comes out of the interior bag as you see one of the most radiantly beautiful gems that you have ever seen. Um, its innards are like a kaleidoscope of color that you can't honestly tell if it's reflecting the sunlight or if it has an internal glow of its own. But the radiance and natural magic of it is apparent. Um, Taskul, you automatically know what this is because it's connected to Dwarven Faith, but anyone else who's seeing it can roll either an Arcana or a Religion. Arcana. Can you roll these un, uh, yeah. without a check-in? Uh, you can technically roll it if you don't have a check in it. It's just always like, would your character reasonably know that? If you're like an eight intelligence barbarian, you logically would not be rolling Arcana. But it's it's table talk thing. So it's a... Arcana or religion? Arcana or religion. Your this is the same for me. So since Taskle, I'm going to do religion. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I went to Sunday school, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I don't know why uh, Fergus rolled so high. Uh, <laughs> I see you're paying attention, daughter. <laughs> so, um, Thrum, you're spacing on what this is. Um, Fergus, you actually yeah, remember what this is? Of course I know what it is. Because you heard that these things are priceless. Uh, that would make sense, then. They are called heartstones. <laughs> They're an incredibly rare uh, type of gem that's only found by itself in one chunk like this, deep underground. Now, um... No, Nulgrim, that's about all the knowledge you would know, other than that it's very magical and has magical properties. But Fergus, Freya, and of course Taskal would know that it has the ability to release life-giving magic from it. And basically what it is, is it's a one-time use of Ray's dead. <laughs> oh damn, you really expect it to die fast. It's a just in case. <laughs> uh, basically what it is is that um, you can look up the spell. You can revive anyone who died within 10 days, so, providing that they're not just completely mutilated to paste, <laughs> by setting the gem over their heart and willing the magic to release, and it takes like 10 minutes. It's To be given one of these for your quest is like an extreme... Thing. It's not a treasure that's easily given out. And Frey gives you chapter and verse. <laughs> I do have a um, question for you, Gombo. Yeah. Are we doing the way that we're, when you raise dead, people can assist in a roll and it, like you have to roll to see if you actually come back or is it just it works? It mostly works because actually they, there's lots of different spells. Raise dead is a fifth level spell, which is a long freaking ways off. No, I know. I, I was just asking because a lot of people do the variant where, like, if someone dies, they have a, a growing DC over the amount of how many times they've died. I actually haven't you have decided, to hit that number. I actually haven't decided on that yet. I will know that no matter what, the Heartstone will work, and okay. also Revivify, which is a level three spell, mm-hmm. will work because that has to be within like ten minutes. Yeah. I thought it was <laughs> so, within like less than that. But... It was oh yeah, it was one minute. Sorry, but it was yeah. it was very it was a very small amount of time. Revivify will work. Okay. Good to know. I just I figured I'd bring it up now in case it came Because Re- Revivify is less of a returning someone from the afterlife and more like defibrillating them. Mm-hmm. So stop their soul from completely leaving their body and all that. Yeah, it, it's gonna be one of those things where there's a difference between heart dead and brain dead, if that makes sense. No, you see, he's mostly dead. Not yeah. dead dead. <laughs> Not dead dead. It's an important <laughs> difference. Though it would take a miracle. Um, <laughs> both of these two little objects are considered negligible bulk, so you can decide who carries them. Okay. Mm, might as well. I'd say, yeah, Taskle probably should. Alright. They seem like cleric things to carry. Yep. Sure. Just so that way, when someone falls down a bottomless pit, you know how screwed you are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just throw the rock after them. He'll no, the no, no, no. The, the rock and the bird falls down the pit. That's when he hits himself with the, the gem right before he hits the ground, mm. and he releases the bird. Oh my god. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, when we're it. heading into the cave, Fergus would be light, um, lighting a torch. Oh. Uh, as soon as you started to strike the match, Thorm would say, no, 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 no. 
If you're going to ring the dinner bell, wait here and let me keep going. No torches, no fires. They're bigger baddies than moths down here. Long teenage sigh as he puts it away and walks in the dark. Your eyes will adjust. You'll come to love the dark. Won't they, Etsy? You know, I was told I was I would come to love Haggis too, but guess what? I don't eat anymore. Ever met a dwarf? Is that last you met a Cassicornia? Ha! <laughs> uh, Fer- <laughs> Fergus, would, <laughs> Fergus would laugh quite a bit. Yes. Uh, met a dwarven king with the heart of a halfling. It's funny, <laughs> because it's true. Humans are quite ugly. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, should we be off then? Gotta get used to the dark, as you say. But of course, it is the dwarven way back to where we came from. And as they keep walking, he, it's right when uh, Nogram says that, Thrum would start singing, Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. <laughs> I had a little drink about an hour ago and it right right to my head. It's a good thing to know is that all these creatures underground may have keen eyesight, but they are deaf as hell. Uh, well, <laughs> about, the sound, uh, about the sound, Jimmy. It, don't be overly loud. No need to be silent, though. The nasties that come to noise are going to feel you walking on the stone anyway. A little noise isn't bad. It it keeps you from uprooting something that would rather get out of your way. But not so much flame. No, the light. The light brings it all. Okay. As we as go you, down, Fergus starts singing a song about blue skies. <laughs> Does he? Is he a good singer? Um, let's roll my performance. performance roll. <laughs> Perform for us. I mean, adequate. It's uh-huh. very good, actually. Yeah. Fergus goes, skies of blue, <laughs> red roses, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just saw the um, blue Tears sky song from eyes. Buddy Rich. <laughs> blue skies smiling at me, nothing but blue skies do I see. Bluebirds singing a song, nothing but bluebirds all day long. Mm. You carry a good tune there. Well... Gotta do something to entertain yourself when you're poor as shit. Alright, and you descend into the dark. Alright, I'll bring you guys over to the map. Ah, dun, dun, dun. so black. <laughs> that would be awesome if the rest of the game you just had a screen black. <laughs> <laughs> so, because your yak can't actually ha- see in the dark, it yep. does have to be guided by the reins. Yep. Um, the terrain here is anything but level. It'll go up and down and wind back. So for overland travel, it is all considered difficult terrain. So if you're seeing, I shift, should have shift-clicked you to it. You did. Yep. Uh, one hex is about 12 miles. Huh. Whoa. Uh, you can travel one hex a day. Lovely. So which I mean at this point we can see three hexes. Hey Gombo. Yep. Um, just to paint the picture for you, I was imagining walking next to the front of the yak, knowing mm-hmm. she can't see, holding her by the bit, uh, you know, and reins up right under the chin, and her just walking with her head next to my shoulder. Yeah. Leading the way, I wouldn't I wouldn't ride on the cart. That way I have a better feel for the. I step on the ground before she's going to step on it, so I know where the rocks and stuff are. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the wagon can hold two people in its seat. Anything more than that can go in the back, but they will be um, considered bulk at that point, which might put put you overweight and it will slow your travel down. We've got we've got forty two bulk two L. Uh, yeah, two light bulk, which okay. ten light so bulk four- equals one bulk. Like 42.2, because yeah. 10 light bulk is one bulk, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, and... Fergus is going to try to stealth into the back without people seeing him, because I just want to do it. So how much does he weigh? Nope. 
<laughs> yeah, you, you immediately see him trying to crawl up into the back of the wagon to be amongst the cheese and nuts. I never put a weight for him, so... Um, in all likelihood, like, the average dwarven weight would be, like, what? 110 pounds? Um, I don't know heavier than that. I have I the player's think. handbook up. Here's I can look up right now. Thing. Depending on what universe you want to go with. Because I would look, and dwarves are much heavier in D&D. Yeah, I don't know. But whatever it is, divide it by 10, and then add whatever you're carrying. Oh, oh, dainty fella, that's not for you up there. Unless you want Etsy to ride on the on your back, you best get out of the wagon. You should have to play a good coin for that sort of show. <laughs> uh, yeah, getting out of the back and walking alongside it again. Trying really hard not to complain the entire time. Come on, lad. A little walk will do you some good. Get some hair on that chest of yours. Uh, I mean, this isn't pleasure hunting or day tripping down here. We're talking about the Underdark. Oops. Gotta keep your wits about you. Gotta keep your head on a swivel. <laughs> oh, are so, we going that way first? Well, well there's no other we don't way. Really have, we don't really have a choice. The tunnel goes one direction. Oh, uh, gotcha. We shall mine our way through. So, yeah, you see the, you see the <laughs> all right, the I'm gonna start there. digging this direction. <laughs> oh, the the white is like a tunnel. I thought that yeah, was like yeah. a, yeah. I nope. thought that was like a water thing feature. Nope. The white is that tunnel. Um, so you guys know, uh, at this particular section of the tunnel, it is only about as wide. You have maybe five foot of clearance on each side of the cart. You don't really have to worry about squeezing it in most places. But this is what we call a medium-sized tunnel. Well, let's hope she keeps her berth. Well, I think uh, this is about all we're going to be able to go for today. Mm -hmm. Oh, have we already booked that long? Yeah. The, this. So to move from here to here is about one day of travel. So as you guys go to settle in for rest, I got another handout for you. Camping notes. Yay. Let's just get this out of the way now so we can get through days faster. Please put what order you wish to be um, having watch in, because I know you guys are going to have watch, and what your passive perception is. Um, we can't edit it, so. Oh, you can't edit it? Sorry. Uh, it's, it's, oh, in Player's Journal. I, I put it in all Player's Journals. I just didn't edit it. There we go. There we go. You should be able to edit it. Where is your passive perception at on the sheet? Is that it's, your, it's your, your perception, perception plus, 10. plus 10. Okay. Yeah. Because... Um, I... <laughs> go ahead. Oh, um, you go ahead first and I'll tell you what I was going to say. I was afterwards. just going to say is that um, unless you're like actively looking for something, you don't roll perceptions while on watch. That's specifically <laughs> what passive is for. Mm. Uh, I'll go ahead and take first watch. Anybody that traveled with Nogrim would realize the few times he was on watch, he'd actually spend pretty much the entire time just looking through his book and not so much actually keeping an effective watch. Um, if someone's editing the sheet, they probably should um, let us know when they're done. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm done. Okay, I'll, I'll do the next one. I'll do the last one. Mm -hmm. Or how many do you think we all... I don't know the rules. Is it well, three hours? hours so. um, a long rest is eight hours. Mm -hmm. You guys don't have to divide up by the hours if you don't want to. You can just order it, and we can just imagine you evenly divide it. Mm. I can't get into it. I, I'm at, I finished editing. You can, someone else can do the next yeah, one. Yeah, you guys can just call out your numbers, too. Communicate. I'll do three. And nice. your passive? 13. 13. I guess I'll take five, fourteen, and at least we have four with nine. Ooh. I mean, none of us have really super high passive perceptions, really. Oh, well, like, actually, thirteen and four, thirteen point. and fourteen are pretty good for passives, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, before we go on, I will say, like, how long, how far wide you said this cave would be? Would um, would twenty uh, feet cover the entire length of the cave? Like, right, the uh, right the end. entire width? Yeah, yeah. I probably would. Because I was going to say, I'm going to go about 30 feet ahead of us mm -hmm. and do my uh, alarm spell mm -hmm. and set it to audible. 
So if anything other than a, anything larger than a tiny creature other than us that crosses it mm-hmm. is going to trigger the alarm. Gotcha. Anything larger than a medium. Got it. No, anything larger than tiny. Larger than tiny. Okay. Well, I'll make sure I understood. That. Important distinction there. <laughs> yes. yes. So small and larger will all trigger it. But like a so tiny a ma- mouse, a mouse or something. Trigger it, but yeah. No, I, I'm curious. Does, there, does anybody have perception as a trained skill? I don't. I have investigation. I yes, I'm here. Do. You yes, do? I okay. Do. Okay. Because okay. those that some, 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 of those, uh, some of those uh some those are pretty low if you're adding your wisdom plus your proficiency bonus. Plus ten. Yeah. Yeah. They're all pretty low. Um, um I, as a favor just to me so I can remember people's names, could people change their names in Rule Twenty to their character name? Yeah. <laughs> Display name. Yeah, I know you guys don't have your tokens on this map, but um, you should be able to uh, edit your uh, sheet you and gotta, update. Yeah, you gotta hit save. Yep. Um, what's uh, the passive perception for Nolgrim and Taskal again? It was 9 and 14? Mine was 9, correct, yes. Nolgrim. I was just yes. adding these camping notes again. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, there okay. Th- thanks for that. This ju- that just makes it so that we become like rapid fire for some days if we want mm-hmm. to. And I can just know at a glance what's going on. No worries. It's a good idea. I could have sworn these sheets actually had um, pre-written passives. I'm just they do. It's oh yeah, they all do. Their, it's underneath all the skills. Yep, yep. But it's easier to have it all in one place mm-hmm. anyway. It is. Task will run an anchor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 All right. So, uh, unless there's anything else, you guys could rest that night and and carry on the next day. (laughs) All right. So Uh, Thrum would Thrum would pass out some uh, uh, items from the wagon, cheese and nuts and little sliver of I don't know what kind of citrus. Would be their oranges, probably. Oranges, oranges lemons, orange. whatever. Probably lemons. They're a little bit more durable of a crop. Yeah, they they last a lot longer too. <laughs> yep. So it's it's an absolute terror to yeah. eat, but it's it <laughs> works. It works. I mean, technically, uh, that probably would go. Well, decent maybe it's a cheese. mix. Maybe maybe we can start with the good stuff. A couple of oranges, and then there were lemons. Yeah. Eat light, boys. We got a long day's walk ahead of us. So rations for the day, I need to take out ten pounds of stuff, right? Yep. Okay. Question is, do we have yak food on the wagon? Yeah. What's the yak eating, Co? Uh, I guess he's gonna have to eat a little turnips. Uh, he probably eats a, since he's a size category larger. I'm gonna be conservative and say he eats double what one person does. Okay. That's that's a very conservative for an mm. animal that size. Probably why I put those turnips on. There, because that was the closest thing I could find to suitable yak food. Yep. I just wanted to be keep us honest and ask about. Yeah, it. yeah. I think that's the fun of it is stressing it. Also, uh, who here is wearing um, more than light armor? No Because you, yeah. you have to take that off when you sleep, otherwise you get yep. a level of fatigue. Yep. I think Fergus is. Wearing... I'm the only one with light armor, I think. Yeah, so he can sleep in armor. Yeah, I'm the weirdo dwarf with leather armor. <laughs> okay. Uh, I believe Cope's handling the bookkeeping there. So, your first night, question mark? It's going to get real blurry. Mm-hmm. Uh, goes by <clears throat> without any incident. It's just a big cave mm-hmm. in the Silence of the Underdark. Next day! <laughs> you keep winding down the same tunnel. Um, wow, I'll just that... say, for flavor's sake, every time we camp, I'm putting the alarm ahead of us, mm-hmm. currently, until we get into more of an open space. Does anyone question Fergus doing this? Uh, mm-hmm. don't, don't go too far into the dark alone. I'm within um, dark vision sight of. Yeah, uh, you should all have, I think, 60 feet of dark vision. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I think so, so, yeah. Some of you might have longer if you're capped. Yeah, yeah I'm, only go- I'm only going 30 feet away from the wagon when I do this. Mm. So it's funny with an eye shot. It just looks like he's performing some kind of weird ritual. Mm. Like he's like muttering to himself and kind of like tracing his footsteps over the line. This we get off on the second day and say, uh, Fergus, isn't it beautiful? Every morning, the same colors. <laughs> Caves are terrible. Walking is terrible. I hate this. <laughs> Was that a haiku? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> some fancy pants has been to Zingami. I, I, I was just—I was just gonna say I did meet a couple people from there. <laughs> uh, Freya says, um, you "May not get used to caves if you want to be king of the dwarves." Well, my first act as king is gonna make a settlement on the on the surface. Oh, mother. At least a summer home, Jesus. Tasco, can you believe this? Is this really what we've got? <laughs> so it would seem. What the hell did my brother do? I don't know. Drunk himself to death. Is that how he killed over? More or less. And things just got darker than this cave. <laughs> Yeah, he was a right rough shit. Bullied me my entire life. Damn. We'll have to drink over how shitty he was someday. Hmm. I'll drink to that. Although, we'll have to find some wine, because I'm not really uh, much of a mead drinker. Yeah, and I'll have to find somebody to drink with about it. (laughs) Might find some nice aged dwarven ale when we find Emmerhall. Very awkwardly, uh, Hobbles away as you guys shit on the patriarch of dwarven kind. <laughs> Actually, technically speaking, um, either gender can be a ruler of a dwarf hole. Um, yeah. They just but put more emphasis patriarch. on firstborns. If it were me, I would have said matriarch. Yep. No. <laughs> so, uh, do you have any uh, younger brothers or sisters? Would he be asking, Fergus? Yes. Well, I have a twin, but I can't exactly imagine. Like, I've always, we've always been just been told I was born first. Wait a minute. Does he look just like you? Um, not really. He he, he looks more like, and he kind of points over to Nolgrim. Son of a bitch. We got the wrong one in the visions. <laughs> He's like, I'm not the one that wrote the vision. Or do you write visions or do you just see them? Either way. If it was up to me, I'd just try to go own a shop somewhere. But here I am with you, and trying not to die. Whatever way you slice it, from Fergus was born first. He has a birthright. Woo! Do you know where the uh, twin is? Mm, last I checked, probably dead. But I don't know. Damn it. Out of uh, curiosity, from a out of character, well, in character, um, but not say out loud yet, uh, is there any precedent or history of dwarven kings abdicating the throne? Uh, roll a history check. I could do that. Uh, it is extremely rare, but there it is something a king can do, but it's usually frowned <clears throat> upon by everyone because to abdicate, you're usually also deposing your clan from controlling the whole. I imagine you would have to have a clear line where like, hey, I'm retiring, like I'm putting my heir in the <clears throat> next position and I'm basically <clears throat> retiring early. I yeah, well, yeah if thing. you're if you're abdicating to your heir, that's fine. If you're abdicating to someone else that is not an heir, then so like a sibling would be it. It would get into the what the elder dwarves call a grumble, mm. which is where they get kind of upset and they also start wondering if there is maybe some dishonorable stuff going in the background. Mm. With that high roll, <clears throat> for example. Uh, assassinations of dwarven monarchs are basically unheard of because mm-hmm. uh, with their extremely lawful and tradition-bound society, if a 
if a person who has the throne is assassinated, pretty much everyone who has normal direct lines to the throne is immediately disqualified. Hmm. Just on principle. It's just if this person died to to like poison, if that could work <laughs> on a dwarf, or a knife in the back, just no. That means one of these assholes is treacherous. Mm-hmm. And it even if you didn't do the assassination, that follows you for okay. your entire life. The, the clan, it follows the clan as a whole? Well, the clan's the one that peer pressures you yeah. mostly. Yeah. So... For the next several hours, uh, Nogrim will be going into great detail about the dwarven history of abdication of the throne and the responsibility of protecting and maintaining the the lineage of the dwarven ruler. Mm-hmm. You know, giving out dates. It, it, it very much becomes a uh, lecture right. of the difference <laughs> dwarven between, history. <laughs> the difference between a king and a high king, mm-hmm. for example. Because uh, one king rules a dwarf hold, which is like a city state, which is the high king of Dammer Hall was the king of all dwarves, the king of kings. Mm. Which there's only ever <clears throat> been four of. So, for C- Professor Noglum is uh, lecturing with no short supply of uh, obscenities. <laughs> <laughs> I have candles. I make some candle wax earplugs. <laughs> How do you melt the candles? You could just mold it without it being. I, I was going to say, I could just take a piece yeah. off and slowly <laughs> warm it in my hands. Like 10 minutes into the lecture, just stick them in my ears. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you guys want to rest up, move on to the next day? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So, another fine afternoon. Nothing happens. It's all very quiet. Suddenly badgers. Suddenly Batman. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're progressing down the windy road. Um, just just for me to picture it in my head, I know what Thrum is doing, but what's the average like travel situation? Is there anyone on the side of the cart in that five foot gap between it and the wall? Are some people behind? Is there anyone sitting in the two seats? Because if you sit in the two seats, you don't count towards its bulk because it's kind of like back your head. Um, yeah, sitting in the two seats. Yeah, Fergus would try to at least get in there as often as he could, whether people trade with him or not. It would be up to them, but he I would try think... to sit in the wagon as much as possible. I would think Drum maybe because it's his he's animal. Is... He's got to get by the bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Drum's gonna walk the whole time. He would insist that the lady ride the. <laughs> and every time he'd catch Ferguson there, he'd try and tell him he needs some exercise. Yep. And he would <laughs> ignore it until someone else has to get into the chair, and then peer pressured out of there. Because remember, kids, <laughs> dwarves aren't sexist, but Thrum is. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when he's actually in the um, wagon, he'd spend a lot of time taking some of the ball bearings he has as part of his inventory mm-hmm. and kind of just using them, do that like stress ball thing where he twirls them around in his hands. Mm-hmm. No, Grum uh, would, insist, would insist on walking French the entire way. Yeah. Dwarven pride and all. Dwarf should do. Although uh, on their trip, he would uh, occasionally um, just kind of idly look along the walls or on the path and see if there's any indication that this has been traveled in any sort of time. Oh, I should also hit this just to remind you, combo. Yep. That's from the Ranger class. Ooh. So as Very we're traveling, time. difficult terrain doesn't slow your group's travel. Well, uh, I'm gonna say with, the with that, that wagon in <laughs> a yeah. cave. Uh, um, but also, I can, as we're walking, I can uh, be looking for forging or, or looking for any, you know, yeah. signs of anything. Maybe without a negative, I don't know how that works. Uh, yeah, um, I never actually brought up travel pace. I just assumed you guys were moving at normal travel pace. There's fast travel pace and then slow travel pace. Um, slow means that you can actually take a stealth test to try to not be heard. Uh, fast gives you disadvantage on being heard 
and on being seen. Um, in this particular case, with difficult terrain, moving at fast pace is not advisable because you won't. You'll move like a hex and a half, which is rounded down to a hex, which <laughs> is the exact same pace you're doing now. Mm. So, I'd say let's just. Let's go normal so that he can yeah. be simultaneously forging and scouting yeah. while he's leading. Because mm-hmm. slow pace would mean it would be two days per hex. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I hope you guys have been keeping track of your food. <laughs> oh, yeah. Crap. It's been... How many days have we been under? Uh, three. three total. Oh, yep. crap. I should, uh, I'll be marking the We gotta go back and get more food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once we open up, I imagine we're gonna be doing some foraging, so. Yep, yep. But right now we're just in a uh, winding tunnel, which probably is not much for foraging. No, it's pretty barren. Though anyone who's keeping an eye out of, like, the, if there's been any signs of passage, you're welcome to give me a investigation roll. Own it. I'll give you advantage. As that I walk that sounds about right. Um, I did, I did, uh, <laughs> I did just say I gave you advantage because I'm helping you look oh, around. Perfect. Like when you're looking around, he'd start looking around with you and ask what you're looking for. <laughs> oh no, sounds about you, right. You don't see anything. Um, okay. Thrum, if you're doing this, because you can do that with your natural uh, explore travel if you want to as well. Yeah, he would be constantly looking for other tunnels and looking for any food on the ground. Yep. Mushrooms. I have no idea what grows down here. As as me. Always watching, Wazowski. <laughs> Always watching. <laughs> I guess what it's. Yep, Thrum is definitely in his element down here. Uh, if no one else was, oh wait, that's a perception. Roll an investigation. Uh, or actually, you know what? I'll let you use perception for this. Okay. Um, I well, thought you had said really have or... anything else to do while riding on top, so I'll keep an eye out. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, wouldn't you know it? The ranger. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, Thrum, as you're going, you're keeping an eye out. Um, it's not. This is a smooth stone cave. Uh, there's lots of dripping off of stalactites and along the walls, so there's no storage of water. There's no particular food sources. There's occasionally like a um, like a small like little branch off the tunnel, like so small it's not even appearing on this map. Um, that mm. maybe like Nalgrim or Freya point out. But you're such an experienced Underdark Traveler that it, it's like someone who's used to walking on the snow. You can just look at it and you're like, no, that's a dead end. That, that'll go on for maybe like 10 minutes and then we'll need to turn around. So you keep them going on the straight path. Uh, okay. Other than that, you don't detect any signs of animal life. You are oh. mostly angling down. Um, so you're going deep, deep down, but um, you're not probably what you personally would consider the underdark quite yet. You're still in just that underground period. Okay. Um, let's see. Fergus. Mm-hmm. You're you said you're like twirling a ball bearing between your fingers? Yeah, I'm like it's like the, I'm twirling three between my like hand. Like, you know give, how you do those like stress ball things? Yeah. Give me a sleight of hand at disadvantage because you're distracted also helping out Nelgrim. 16. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're uh you're you're dexterous. You're a straight up Boris from Goldeneye on those things. I imagine with the 16 like I sometimes when I stop spinning them I do that thing where like people who know magic and stuff will like move their hand side to side and it goes off to the back of the hand and back into the palm. Yep. Yep. Um however as you guys are looking around you start feeling the ground shake a little bit. And then it gets a little bit more intense to where there's little stone particulates coming off the ceiling. I'm going to mage armor up immediately out of panic. <laughs> Do I have I experienced anything like this naturally before? Um, I without needing to roll, it is either an earthquake or a cave in. All right, hold up to the walls. She might be coming in. Quit playing with your balls. <laughs> oh, they're long gone. Hey, that they are. <laughs> <laughs> so you all scurry for cover in whatever fashion. Uh, the yak does not give a shit. <laughs> I hide under the wagon. She can't see it. 
<laughs> well, like it can feel it, but I feel like right. to have a trained yak that goes into the underdark of all places, it's one chill ass animal. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. She is like on a level of high you guys have never experienced. Yeah. Like it's not this turn up yak, just eating, it's a snurb. Nothing this but snurb. Yak yes. Makes a Buddhist monk look like a a taunt string. <laughs> Um, but yes, the, the ground shakes and buckles a little bit. You can hear some of your supplies within the rattle, uh, wagon rattling, um, which echoes terribly, but then it slowly slows down and stops and everything's fine. There's no cave in, no rocks fall. Everything's completely a okay. Everyone. All right. I'm still underneath the, um, the wagon. Um, <laughs> Real quickly, I am going to uh, Earth in sight and see if I can see anything. Oh, um, oh, Earth in sight. Yeah, that's your tremor sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You you do that like the thing straight up from the Avatar, where you just like you put your feet on the ground and you just close your eyes and you you feel it. And there's nothing really moving other than all of you and the yak in your immediate vicinity. Yeah, everything seems pretty stable. You're not picking up on anything. All right, young buck, out from under the wagon. And then Thrum would look over at Taskal. Can't get a good dwarf under 100 these days. Not under 100, you can't. Slowly crawls back under from out of the wagon and goes back to the chair in front. All right, let's forward, John. All right. Uh, as they go forward, Thrum's going to be making sure there aren't any fissures or cracks that they're coming up on. Sure. As a result of the. You can give me a perception test. Uh, and you can use your Dwarven Stone Cunning, which means you double your pro- uh, proficiency bonus. So at this level, I think that would be an extra two. Uh, yeah. You don't have to click anything. Just roll it, and we can mentally add it. Yeah, I was going to say, is there an easy way to do that in your sheet? Um, so my perception, I get one from Wisdom, two for, for proficiency. So I make that two a four, yeah. and then add my Wisdom. I mean, it yeah. should have be on your sheet where you can just click the roll. Yeah, just click the roll and then we'll just add it. You don't need to monkey it because it's not going to be to everything. Stone cutting is oh, only just for garden. Sorry, I misunderstood you. Yeah, I no thought problem. you were saying we'll just hand roll it. Oh, that sucks. So that yeah, would be well, a 10. No, that's a 10, which is considered average. So you're not seeing anything. Um, whatever caused that or whatever that was, it's not immediately impeding you. We're looking all right. Fellas, but uh, and lady, but keep a look out for um, loose rocks and whatnot. All right, you probably guys press on. You end up bedding down when you get tired. Everything's all right the next time. So that's another day, and you keep it moving. Um, for the for the beginning of today, um, the only person who I imagine's not up when it happens is Fergus. You guys have probably noticed sort of a ritual of Freya cleaning off her armor at night and then inscribing things onto it in the morning. Uh, early this morning, uh, a thunderclap goes off. <laughs> That's extremely loud in a cave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say Fergus would definitely wake up. <laughs> Nogramaria has his water picking end. The fuck was that? It's Meanwhile, still I'm away. under the I'm under the wagon again. <laughs> Meanwhile, you guys are talking. It, you still hear it echoing into the distance. <laughs> Probably people, both the hex in front of you and behind you, heard that. Oh God! Son that smells gonna that smells gonna get us killed. <laughs> you said no, no. I mean, I guess it is in a cave, but um, it just yeah. says a hundred feet is the range of it. Well, yeah, that's the damage area. No, 100 it's feet is 100 feet is the range of but the that, that's okay, also Okay, you're not, right, you're right. It, even if I tripled it, it's probably heard for 300 feet. Yeah. Um. So, fine. Probably just within your hex. Son of the mother, what the bloody blazes was that? 
Thunderclap, page three. <sighs> Damn it, Pascal. What kind of crazy writing is she reading? Mm. You're a loud reader. <laughs> Do I keep it quieter if you do not mind? I'll certainly try, but there are a lot of power behind these words. Just don't well, go blowing your bollocks off. Wait. <laughs> 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 Everyone turns and looks at Tom. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. There's dwarves, it's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> so if there wasn't anything else you guys want to do, we can move on to the next day. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, hope you're keeping track of the food, because I'm keeping track of the days. Yep. How's our food supply looking? Do we have a communal... Uh, if you yeah. look in the wagon. Okay. Light wagon. We've already consumed 16 of 100 pounds of nuts, 16 of 100 pounds of cheese, 16 of 100 pounds of turnips, and 8 pounds of citrus. Probably so. a little bit more turnips. Oh, are you only feeding the turnips to the yak because the yak's been Correct. eating? Correct. Okay. Yes, that's all the yak is eating. And I'll be slow on updating the bulk. I'm not worried about that. So yeah, that's a post session thing. I mean, it's Especially only going. Room. Yeah, if it's going down right now. Yeah, if it's going down, then it'll only get become less of an issue. Yeah. All right. On day five, the tunnel actually widens, and until it enters out into like a T section of a much larger tunnel. Like this one's very large. Like the surface, the the ceiling of it is just at the edge of your dark vision. You've got lots of clearance on each side. Ah, that feels good. Can I take a look at the walls and determine if it was naturally carved out or with tools or, say, a purple worm? Yeah, that would be uh, knowledge nature with stone cutting added in. Yeah, this is literally the best environment for stone yeah. cutting. <laughs> <laughs> so that plus two. Uh, you're pretty damn sure it's natural. Okay. Uh, there's been like a small trickle of water probably running down the center of this. It's just hundreds of years of erosion. I gotcha. Um, looking around the, the general exit of this ca um, this tunnel into the bigger expansive caves, mm -hmm. does it look like there's a lot of animals that have traversed this general area right here? Uh, the, the in and out of the little tunnel or just yeah. the big tunnel? No, the in um, and out of the little tunnel. Give me a investigation. Okay. Twenty-five. You'd reckon that you're probably the first one that's been down that way in at least a decade, if not a couple. By the way, that wasn't a natural twenty. Um, my subclass gives me a D four on investigation checks. It's it still a, it's it's still a twenty-five. <laughs> no, no, I'm just letting you know. Yeah, I appreciate. It. Which direction? I was just like seeing if anything has come in and out of the cave that we came out of, oh, making wow. sure that like it wasn't a well traveled path that we just weren't noticing before. Mm. Now this is a cave. I've seen them so big you can't see the ceiling. So which way do you reckon we should go? Hmm. And he's, gonna, he's gonna take a minute to. Um, use this and see if he sees any tracks or anything around. While you're at it, could you also give me a knowledge history? <laughs> can I help with that? Or can I roll? Uh, this is going to be a very thrum specific thing. Okay. Oh, well, that's good for him. So, Thrum, you haven't been down this way in this part of the Underdark before. You've mainly done some of the southern mountain ranges areas looking for clues. Uh, but you have talked to some other Underdark explorers. And according to the rumors, not the rumors, but the tales you've heard, there is a Sivilbin settlement somewhere around here. Sivilbin are the Deep Gnomes. A what? A Deep Gnome. Uh, they're gnomes that live in the Underdark. They're also called Sivilblin. I don't is know it, why. Is that that S-I-L-V-R-E? Yeah. 
Double yeah. B E D. It's or... easier to say deep now. It's it's yeah. deep now. Okay. <laughs> um, you remember just from the tales that without using cardinal directions, um, it's they're prop they're this direction somewhere. Well, fellas, he's gonna. You'll see Thrum kind of mm-hmm. run some sand through his fingers and smell it, look around, find a little creature dropping, taste it, stand back up. That was a rock. Oh, that was a rock. What did you ask me? Oh, uh, you asked. Yeah, I, Taskul. From the tales I've heard from uh, some of our other cave divers I believe this is the direction we should head um, we, we'll be looking for some deep gnomes I know there's a civilization of them little little. I don't know what what'd you say a hamlet village or uh, some kind of settlement it's always very vague a little settlement of deep gnomes on the way and that's a telltale sign that you're in the on the right track and it smells uh Smells less know me that direction, so I think we should all head this one. I feel like there should definitely be a word for a town of deep gnomes. There probably is, but he's just unsure of the size of the settlement. A dune of deep gnomes. Yeah. A holler. A cackle of deep gnomes. Considering it's underground, it would probably be a crack. A crack of deep gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Good dirty me. minds, Co. Crap. Did anybody bring toilet paper on this adventure? <laughs> <laughs> no, we've been using the dirt. You use the no, inner li- There's not I even just, dirt. I just use a little yak fur. I, I've just been eating all the cheese, so I don't have to go yet. <laughs> you hey, guys, use the inner lining of your pants like a man. Alarm. I don't mean to alarm you, but this is like... This is a Middle Ages fantasy setting. Our toilet paper is reusable. That's why I said you use the inner lining of your pants like a man. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, let's wipe, let's you not get involved with the details of bathroom usage. Though, to be fair, um, something that's very common is that water is plentiful here. There's a reason why you're not tracking your water supply, because you can hold a water skin up to the wall for a couple minutes, and you'll get some drinkable water. Especially considering we're immune to poison. Yeah. No, you're, you're resistant to poison. Oh, we're resistant. Either way. Yeah, I imagine like adapted to wall water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I imagine dank water doesn't really affect us that much. Uh, a true dwarf wipes with pumice stone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and you just wash it off. All right, rock and roll. So you guys start heading that direction that Thrum uh, pointed out. Um, though sometimes it is just the smooth tunnel. Occasionally it'll widen out. There will be like some elevated. Um, like ledges and such like that, where there's lots of stalagmites, like little bushes and groves. Sometimes they're a little lower than you, sometimes they're a little higher than you. Uh, but you all have plenty of room to, to get up and move around here. Sometimes the tunnel narrows, but you're not, like, confined. Uh, you said stalactites. Those are the ones that come from the ceiling, right? Stalactites are on the ceiling, stalagmites are on the floor. So they're little groves of stalagmites. Because as it was taught to me in uh, when I visited a, a cavern, stalactites hang tight to the ceilings. Stalagmites yeah. might grow up and become pillars. Oh, I've never heard the mite one. I just remember the tight yeah, one. Yeah, I, I heard both of those. Yeah, I during when I was in school, I remember they took us on a field trip to um, go into a mining cave. I, I, I yeah, started talking about it. Uh, I went to uh, caverns in Mount Shasta in California. So yeah, was, I did. I did the same thing. Yep, yep. Um. So as you guys are progressing here, ba 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 ba, checking notes. Ta uh, thrum. You are the first to notice it. Um. In the path directly in front of you is a wagon wheel just in the middle of the road. A wagon wheel? A wagon wheel. Hmm. Uh, let's hold up a second, laddies, before we go traipsing over this. Let's take a peek around, and he's going to see 
uh, if you can pick up any tracks or notice any scuffle of what happened. Okay. Hold on. I'm just setting something up. Uh, give me a investigation while you're at it. You fellas look about. See if you can see. Because my investigation sucks mightily. <laughs> yeah, Whoa! Um, boy, I'll, I'll never mind. Badass. That's a natural one. Mm-hmm. Okay, are you just looking around, or are you moving towards uh, the wheel? Uh, well, being a hunter, he would, before he dirties up the crime scene, he would bend down and start looking at the ground to see if he can see tracks, disturbances of sand, to see if it was people walking, carrying a wheel that just dropped it, or if there was a wagon, and if there was a wagon, a scuffle of feet, you know, that kind of stuff. I will All say right. that um, Freya is specifically looking to see if there's any way that this could be a trap. Okay. Because she was a part of a hunting party, and it seems like very much like oh, <laughs> A weird wagon wheel in this in the middle of this cave. Yeah, someone's gonna go and touch it. Yeah, um, I'm going to hide inside the wagon, not in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You hide behind the oranges. And I imagine all this food and cheese and stuff are in like barrels, right? Yeah. Uh, hey, you guys should be able to see that route, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. That is a big yak. It's a yeah. large creature. Hell yeah. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't occupy that entire space, but it's just approximate. Just like you don't occupy our entire yeah. foot spaces. Um, just so you know, um, this up here is one of those like elevated landings. It's about like a, a 10 foot uh, up, and there's just a bunch of stalactites. It's super low res because I had to rip it out of the book. But um, So yeah, with that natural 20 thrum... Um, just from here, you're able to tell, though it is, it's slight and most people wouldn't be able to see it, there is the slight residue of wagon wheels coming like towards where you're coming from, but they stop around where the wagon wheel is. And then, though it is a little bit far off, you can just see that you're getting a lot for a natural 20. Scrape marks of like a large perhaps wooden structure was dragged up the cave up this here. direction. Yeah, onto that 10-foot ledge, you said? Yeah, where all the stalagmites are, where it could be possibly hidden. <coughs> um, yeah. With that investigation, Freya, in combination with Thrums looking around, uh, you do determine that it would be a good spot for an ambush. Freya. You're not certain if the wagon wheel itself is the bait, but it's a spot that would be advantageous. Um, Freya pulls out her uh, crossbow and not just thrum and says, we're looking at an ambush. Yeah. Everybody to the left and up on the ledge, fellas. Quietly. Take cover oh. positions. Mulgrim's going to uh, take a cup out of his hip pouch and fill it with a little bit of water from his water skin mm-hmm. and use that to cast uh, armor of Agathus upon himself. What the hell, man? I like a good drink, but this is no time. <laughs> he just splashes against himself and it freezes to his body. Yeah, he literally just ice, ice spikes to his armor. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, while I'm in the wagon, um, just out of fear, I just mage armor up again. Does your mage armor look like anything, or is it just invisible? Um, I was the, the uh, what I was thinking of it basically makes it look like his um, cloak that he wears a lot is more mm-hmm. armored. Okay, is all that, makes it look like it. Yep, that's reasonable. Uh, and you guys are predominantly speaking dwarvish amongst yourself, I imagine, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, after a second, I'd suggest everybody kind of take cover a bit behind the wagon if we don't see anything we could nudge the wagon over to the wall use it as a step up to peek over the 10 foot nonsense let's just get up there and kick some ass that's the way to get up there man get up there quietly I notice you aren't well show me what a good jumper you are <laughs> mm, is that an athletics check to try that would that would be an athletics check alright <laughs> That's if you're trying to do it quickly. First good dwarven challenge. 
<laughs> How high can you jump? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, jump up there. You're able to like grab and pull yourself up pretty mm. easily. Um, second, checking something. Let me show you how a real dwarf does it. Yeah, you look dainty like an elf there, my friend. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you can move to yourself to where you wanna uh, be, where you pulled yourself up. You said this is far the ledge. Yeah, it is. Okay. I know it's. it's You'll see when we get yeah. to a map that I designed, <laughs> and yeah. you'll see how clear it is. <laughs> yeah, I had to go find better maps for Rune Lords for that reason. Yeah, I know. It's, they were just so low quality when you rip them from the book. <clears throat> it, yeah, this just I, saved me so much time. Because uh, I'm able to use, I think, a Zacrobat reader from work and just right-click and save it directly from the PDF and save mm -hmm. it as a uh, PNG, so it's pretty high quality, and that's kind of what you've been seeing with mine yeah gotcha. you've got like that paid for version well i don't through, work does through work right, right. <laughs> yeah they're like now, now i know why you really moved to it. florida <laughs> that certainly helps so if, if you need right. help with maps in the future just let me know i could pull spoil everything for you <laughs> <laughs> i won't know what anything means but no right. I, I know just so the, an offer the kind of grove <clears throat> of stalagmites are kind of obscuring your vision, but you can see this farther in. And you don't really see or hear anything. Thrum would have... Sorry, go ahead. No going to look up or look, uh, peer back over the edge. You, last, you laddies coming or not? About that time uh, to be climbing up on the wagon. Uh, oh, he need a booster chair. You guys can uh, do it without rolling if you just take your time. Okay. It's just well, an athletics check would like get you it in like a move action. Thrum <laughs> would climb up on the wagon and then just look over the ledge and say, "Wise dwarf looks before he leaps, laddie. You won't last long in here with that bravado." Yeah, I'm gonna just take my time. Let's see, Nulgrim, Taskal, Freya, roll me perception checks. Okay, so. <laughs> Uh, Taskal, you see, um, in the dark of stalactites, a little motion from this direction that I just signaled. Uh, something's out there. No girl. I bust see what that took out the wagon. No girl busts out his shield and war pick. Well, why keep them waiting? Uh, right as you say that, a small hooded figure steps out, holding up her little hands. Uh, clearly a gnome. Like holding them up like I surrender? Or yeah, holding... like I surrender. <clears throat> I lower my crossbow. Um, She goes... We, you, friendly? Is she says in dwarven? It, it's it, she's very much saying it with like the what someone who has learned a language but hasn't used it in forever. Not unfriendly. Nogrum would uh, in under common say, we are passing through, and I imagine you are from this area. Oh, thank the stones you speak under common. I haven't, <laughs> haven't used Dwarven since I was very young. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't uh, live around here. I live... And she, like, gestures vaguely mm. <clears throat> uh, towards the tunnel here. Mm. Did you lose a wheel? Bit more than that. Bloody uh, Skizrael attacked. Didn't think they were out this far. That is that is a good question that I didn't uh, look at when I made my character. What determines what languages you speak? Um, I believe he gets to select something based upon your. Remind me, because I'm a little fucked up <laughs> um, this myself. Um, my certain background classes give them. Yeah, my my background let me pick any one language. I chose under common. Okay, yeah, I got one from background and one from class, but that's rigor. Um, yeah. and it is worth noting that you can spend downtime to learn languages. Uh, so if you ever want to like pitch a tent and camp someplace for like a week, 
you can start performing downtime actions to like teach yourself like, under common and stuff like that. Cool. And what did she say it attacked? Uh, Skizrau. Now, with the knowledge nature nine, would I know what a Skizrau is? Not a freaking clue. <laughs> then he would look. Then he would uh, look over to Thrum and say, "Do you know what this Skizrau is?" What could I roll for that? Uh, knowledge, nature, or history. <clears throat> what about animal handling? Is it a type of animal? Uh, knowledge, nature, or history. Okay. You also have no freaking clue. Oh, history would work too. Uh, you are. Yeah, you can try rolling history. That's. What I I'm imagine I don't even. I don't even hear this right now because I'm still hiding in the wagon. Yep. Uh, you even with a fourteen, you have no idea okay. what gets around. I have to say, we are relatively new to these parts, so I'm not familiar with that particular creature. Do you need a hand with anything? You... Um... She probably sees Thrum standing on top of something. Mm -hmm. She goes, you, uh... You heading back that way? That's the plan. Uh... Any chance I could get a ride the wagon and the people i was riding with were uh taken by the skizrau uh right you said you're not from around here um she's like thinking of the words uh spider you, you know what spiders are right oh yes of course uh, big, love spiders big big spider um they're not like animals though they they talk that's reassuring. I'm going to do a quick insight just to see. No, oh, yep, that's about right. Yeah, she's super <clears> on the level. <throat> super on the level. All right. Limey. And are they still around here? No, they they went up that tunnel the other way. They uh they hauled off the other people that were in the wagon after uh, killing Sheriff Gunther. Did they take a wagon as well? No, it's uh, she gestures over her shoulder uh, behind her. It's. They hit it in the rocks. I I slipped away when they attacked, and I I managed to hide. Did you say a sheriff? Yeah, what? the sheriff of a uh, faster vault. It's the town where I, well, I I I can't come from there. Well, this is a, a, a town full of your folk. Yeah, civilman. I'm. I'm all for having you join us. And if nothing else, we could also load up the rest of whatever wares you have and bring that with us. Yeah, Thrum would, Thrum would look to see where the wagon is. Yep. Oh, we're we at the area. Because he is all about looting, because these are finite resources. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, hey, that not looting for good. gold, but like, oh, an extra wagon wheel. That's really handy down here. Ooh, wheel of cheese. I'll take that. Oh, a shovel oh, just laying off the side? <laughs> I just revealed the entire area, yep. basically. So I asked if uh, I asked if they were hurt at all. Uh, who were hurt? The the gnomes that were taken? Yeah. No, or this this one in particular. I'm asking. Uh, she says no, no. I'm uh, I'm fine. I I got away in time. Not <laughs> the others weren't so lucky, unfortunately. I guess. <clears throat> Are you armed? Yeah, uh, you see she's got like a, a short sword on her, and let me check what else she's got. Uh, yeah, she's got a, a short sword on her, and she's got a dagger on her opposite hip, and she's got like a, a little quiver of short bow arrows, and a, a bow slinged over her shoulder. Okay, well that's good. We are, looks back at the wagon, down go man, in a way. <clears throat> <laughs> How long ago was the attack? Uh, maybe an hour? Oh, well, damn, we just missed. We could have been of help. I'm sorry we couldn't be here sooner. Eh, feel sorry for the other ones there. Skizral eat them slow, I'm told. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. Wait, now, you said these were spider-like creatures, right? Yeah, yeah, they <clears throat> webbed them up and hauled them away. Spiders often have a slow-working venom, and they'll leave their prey wrapped up 
for days and days. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine. Wait, wait a boss of the spears there, Thrum. Well, what I'm saying is bloody hell, a couple of spiders against the five of us. We could go rescue the sheriff. Hmm. Getting good with the local folk. Maybe get a guide out of it. I like that logic. Um, as you're saying that, Thrum, you find the wagon. Um, there's just a few small uh, barrels inside. And as you're looking at the wood, because you didn't really examine the wheel, uh, it's a kind of a strange, like really almost bone white, fibrous wood. Not like any sort of tree or anything you've seen. Uh, you can roll me a history or a nature. This is going to be pretty easy for you. Okay. Come on, that one. Yep, you just beat it. Um, it's You've actually heard of this before. It is actually mushroom fibers that I are was thinking the entire yeah, thing. woven and hardened to become a substance that's not quite as hard, but is almost as good as normal wood. Well, I think Thrum has got the right idea. There's no point in letting people die when we can do something about it. Also, you see a massive blood stain on the fir- uh, on the front seat. Like, okay. if that much blood came out of a person, they're super dead. <laughs> Does it look like this is the type of wagon that was pulled by a creature? A yak or something? Um, I would say almost like definitely a... not a yak. <laughs> yeah, definitely not a yak. Right. But whatever was pulled by, it's not here, and you don't see any sign of it. So he'd turn around and say, uh, Lassie, what did you say your name was? Oh, sorry. <clears throat> right, I don't do formal introductions. Uh, my name is Aravana. I already have your knife. Um, Pardon me? Uh, Irvana already has your knife. Mm-hmm. I don't uh, know an Aravana. Uh, but most people just call me Nivy Ivy. I like that, Nivy Ivy. I am no grim, no grim lunic. Do we have a pay- handout for notes? Uh, yeah, I can give you one if you want. I'm, I'm yeah. typing some. So her name is Aravani. I, I already have your knife. I'll I'll type it out for you in a second. That's fucking awesome. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, gnomes, man, they all have crazy names like that. I I auto baby. It's a boy. <laughs> uh yeah. Hang on. I'll type up the name. Uh, what kind of creature was pulling your wagon here? It's not a normal harness that I've seen. Uh, Strider. Uh, you would know what that is, uh, because the yeah, people sometimes use them. They're <laughs> like a really giant... They're, they're similar to a spider, but they're mm. something like a cross between a spider and like a bed bug. Yeah. Just a water bug. Yeah, basically. Very big, very dumb. Um, they form bonds really easily with people. It's what you get when you let them in your bed. Iverna already has your knife. Okay, that's straight up her name. I yeah, <laughs> love it. Um, yeah, when you introduce yourself, um, Ogram, yeah, she she steps up and shakes her hand. You would shake hers. And then hold on. Yep. yep. Uh, Already has your knife. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, after she shakes your hand, she reaches behind her and pulls out your dagger, uh, Meldrum, <laughs> and hands it back to you. She goes, hence the name. <laughs> I like you. That's a bloody dangerous trick. Handy, too, I'm sure. I forgot that I uh, need to turn off the always roll. What's in these uh, barrels here? What were y'all carrying? We could, uh, Fergus, Fergus, get your ass up here and help me with these barrels. <sighs> no, Grima, yeah, you, go over none there. Of, and... None of you have seen him since this whole thing started. <laughs> no, Grima, go over and huck a barrel over his shoulder. Damn, where is that boy? <laughs> then walk over to the edge. Is Fergus under the cart? Um, you'd have to probably roll to see him because I rolled a 22 on stealth and he has not moved since then. <laughs> Nope. He's hiding in the barrel of nuts. Uh, Nivy Ivy says, <laughs> oh, oh, there's another one. Whew, okay, good. When you said the five of us, I thought you meant me for a second. <laughs> well, at so least in you. theory, I wouldn't be too surprised if Fergus is already halfway to the surface by now. 
Bloody hell, do we need to go back for the little runt? <laughs> um, Fergus will reveal himself to Nolgrim as he's looking down into the car. He's like, I'm not here. <laughs> and like, well, there slowly, you are. And then Catch. slowly moves and his head. Nolgrim back would uh, the toss wagon. the barrel at him. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Roll a um attack roll. <laughs> Dexterity or strength. You could just do a D twenty and add manually. It's whatever. Okay. Eleven. <laughs> Does that, that miss me? You you manage to duck as it clunks in. <laughs> Is that boy down there? Yep. How do you end the wagon as usual? Ah, uh, you wee little shit! Get up here and help us. He's he's down there catching. Freya says, L- "Let me let me clear something." Nivy Ivy. Yep. Are these people that you care about that were taken? Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, that was a Kenneth level sigh right there. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like a long term of uh, just. I mean, the sheriff was pretty nice. I have a shame what happened to him. <laughs> Since Ferguson is not hidden, like, were you arrested and you were being taken somewhere? No, no, I was not. That is definitely not true. Inside oh. check. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, inside check. That was a good question. Definitely. Like, give me a second. Uh, okay. We're we're all gonna insight right now. Everybody perks up to that question. No, no, no Grim's gonna believe her. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so those are some rock solid rolls. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll tell you the results. She's, she's just going to finish sentence. She goes, No, no. Sheriff Gunther brought me along as a guide. And also because I wanted to get out of Faster Vault. Uh, and with those insight rolls, uh, she is telling the truth, but you're 100% sure she's been arrested before. <laughs> <laughs> Given her last name, you can make some guesses. <laughs> Fergus is already warming up to her. So, so why do you want to leave that place? And he'll grab another barrel and start hucking it, or make his way to toss it to Fergus. Yeah, That's Fergus would actually start contributing. <laughs> kind of a personal question. Why are a bunch of dwarves down here? Looking for our ancient homeland. I was kidnapped. That Yeah, that, that sounds plausible. <laughs> That's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Listen... If you guys want to go rescue the other ones, hey, that's great. They don't deserve that. I admit that. But, you know, I would really appreciate a ride back to Faster Fall. You really don't want to be walking these tunnels by yourself. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm just going to keep my head down on this one. I barely got out of that last scrap without being noticed. I'm, I'm not going to run into the next one. Well, if you ride with us, you could keep our uh, fragile friend Fergus company in the wagon while we take care of these wee spiders. Absolutely. I can't say I respect your point of view that much, but a ride is what you need, so I guess it's what we're going to give you. Hey, Gombo, scraping through the rest of the wagon, um, do I feel like these wheels could potentially be manufactured to fit on our wagon if I needed to? Uh, you do have an artificer and lots of people with tool proficiencies, so I will say yes. Yeah, let's grab these spare parts. These could be good down here. I they'll didn't be have... about two bulk per wheel. Okay, I didn't have the cash for uh, spare parts, but this is good when you're playing Oregon Trail. I was going to say, we're right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Don't... Gra- grab an axle too. We'll need that. Oh, that it's very much broken. Uh, the card is pitched onto its side, and that wheel that you found on the ground snapped off. It's right, the so wheels are salvageable. The, everything else is shot. Three mushroom wheels. Both axles are gone. Uh, they're just broken. Yeah. Um, and remember, though, each wheel is two bulk. So I think we only need one, two maybe two if necessary. But look, cards know. carry one spare tire. We only need one. <laughs> We'll take the rest of the supplies and a the wheel then. 
Ah, take oh. all three. Until we run out of room, then we can just toss one over. Better well, be safe than sorry. Uh, while they're harvesting stuff from that wagon, mm -hmm. just because Fergus is an ex-criminal, he's going to like move all their arc supplies in a more confined area in the wagon, yep. and he's going to alarm around our supplies. So everyone can go access it except for her, and it'll be an audible alarm if she tries to go near our stuff. Um, Freya will go to... Yep. So I won't be able to use my alarm to sleep tonight, but this seems like something he, he would do. <laughs> Are you not able to use it? You're not able to do a ritual casting? Nope. No, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, a racial thing. It's a ah, racial gotcha, thing. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, as, uh, as, so Thrum is bringing back all of them, so I guess Freya would go over there and pick up one of the wheels because wagon wheels are pretty large. Mm-hmm. It's actually a little bit lighter than you expected. Uh, mushroom fiber wood is apparently a little bit not, uh, less dense than oak or other woods. And um, she would walk aside uh, Thrum as they go and carry the wheels <laughs> back, and she'd say, I really think this is a good opportunity to, to establish ourselves and get allies that we're going to need. Now you're thinking with your noodle. That's the way go, Lassie. If we're going to rule the Underdark, we can't just kill everything. We've got to have friends and partners. Well, the longer we wait, the less likely it is they'll be alive when we get there. Agreed. I say we turn it around and head there now. Is there enough room in this passage to turn the wagon around? Oh, no. She pointed the direction in which you guys were heading. Mm. Oh, she said the spiders went that way? Yeah. Oh well, then that makes it a hell of a lot. Yeah, it's it's on your way. <laughs> oh good, yeah. Otherwise, since it happened an hour ago, you would have passed them. <laughs> well, I thought maybe when we turned right, they had gone. And the other what direction. is the what is the direction that she is wanting to be taken to? The same direction. Okay. It's oh, a, this it's, all works out. It's Rose. a one way passage. Mm -hmm. As uh, Freya Freya comes up behind her and uh, sort of slaps her on the back and says, "She stumbles." <laughs> we'll give you passage, but you're going to have to sit through us trying to save your buddies. If that's what you want to do. I. What's that thing you have strapped to the front of your wagon? Ah, uh, that's Esky. Esky's a dog. Oh, don't try and move her, though. She kicks like a mule. Huh. I've never seen a doll before. Yeah. Watch the pointy end, too. Um, so the Fergus, other end isn't um, much better, to be honest. Fergus kind of sticks his head out. It's like, so if you ever hear someone call you Dollface, this is what they're calling you, by the way. He kind of goes back in the wagon. <laughs> <laughs> what were those in the Muppets? What were the two old men that would like oh, God, yeah. yell, <laughs> yell things down from the balcony, just one-liners? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's basically Fergus right now. Like, I don't think anyone has, since this has happened has seen his whole body. He just keeps sticking his head out. Uh, <laughs> as everyone's loading up, she leans over to uh, Taskel, looking in the direction of the wagon, and goes, that, uh, that one in the wagon's a little flighty, isn't he? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> she just, like, looks at you, looks back, waits for more. And it just walks away. <laughs> Come on, you two. Tasco, quit gabbing her ear off. We don't got it. <laughs> I like how he manages to say a full sentence. There's one word, but then there's a level of size that have all the context <laughs> to it. <laughs> uh, without being asked, she just takes one of the seats at the front of the wagon. <laughs> no problem. We'll go back and huff it. Mm hmm all right, so you guys go about um, four miles down the road, so to speak. Uh, you guys don't need to move your token. I'm, I'll be moving for you. Uh, before you get to... Uh, I'll see. Can I move everyone? I forgot what they are. Copy and paste, yeah. Yeah, okay, there we go. I'll move the wagon in a second. Um, there's an I'll move you guys a little farther back than this but there's what it is is that uh, you see two tunnel openings on either side there it's the first time you've seen something like this in this path since you ran to Ivy Ivy where's our 
humble guide to let us know if these are the directions we need to be going. Oh, are you going to put us on a map, or is this... Oh, sorry. No. Just I'll, in click, the I'll click and drag you down there. Hold on, I'm just getting it set up. Yeah, you okay. just shift-click, and we'll all go down there. The wagon's a little cockeyed. I think use your minds. Yeah. I imagine it's something like this. If as you, good as drunk. If you hold alt, you can move the wagon to not align with the grid. Yeah, it does. it's on the background layer anyway. It doesn't align right now. Oh, that's fine. Either way. Uh, but yeah, you see there's these two little narrow passages. It, one person could squeeze through it. No way a wagon would. Hmm. Any idea which way? She yelled Ivy? No grandma yeah. po poke his head through one. See if he can see anything down this one. Uh, let me measure you out here. Oh, yeah. Because you're, uh, you're a cavern dwarf, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, I won't even let's around with this. It's another cave with a uh, little entrance at the back there. Mm -hmm. What do you see up there? Just another chamber. Let me do an investigation, see if there's any sign of recent disturbance or blood okay. or anything like that. Ooh, Ooh look at that. Nice. Um, right on this corner here, you see a little bit of spider silk, as if something was being moved past and caught a little bit and stuck mm -hmm. to the wall. I think, I think that this might be the way they've gone. I have a uh, little remnants of spider, but uh, I'm not sure what's down this way. And he'll wander down there and peer down that oh. hallway. While you're revealing that, I, I did want to kind of run it back a little bit while we were traveling down this sure, way. Sure, no problem. Um, while um, Fergus is in the wagon and she's sitting in one of the chairs and stuff, um, he's going to try to use Steve's can, which is, involves like a lot of like back talking, like not back talking, mm -hmm. but like like sideways speech and everything, mm -hmm. and see if she picks up on it and see if she's fluent in it as well. This is always the funny part where, <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, I character, yes, she does know Thieves can, but I have no idea how you two who have come from two different cultures know the exact same language, but she does somehow. <laughs> I imagine it's something like it's picking up on subtle cues yeah. in in the speech, mm -hmm. and then realizing, hey, they're both like doing that sideways. They're saying something, but they're meaning something else. Yeah, she she's got those big, long, like World of Warcraft elf eyebrows that she mm -hmm. works a little bit as you're talking. Are you saying anything in particular? Um, mostly along the lines of um, like kind of explaining a little bit why we're down here about we're trying to rediscover an old home. Mm -hmm. And filling in on the details of how, um, like, I'd, I'd like to trust you and everything, but clearly I can't trust you 100%. And just as a precaution, and I kind of point to our stuff that I kind of confined to an area. If you go in this area, it's going to trigger an alarm. And let's just err on the side of caution. And I'm letting you know ahead of time. Because I'd like it to not be like a thing, but if it becomes a thing, we're going to be aware of it. Uh, she replies back to you and thieves can't. Okay. Two things. One, that quest you guys are on sounds absolutely insane. You're Indeed. all gonna die. I, I agree. Okay, good. Someone's got sense. Second question is, why would I steal your stuff? I don't know. I she, I've had people she try points to steal to the She points to the tunnel behind you, tunnel in front of you, and it's just the infinite darkness of nothingness. She goes, where would I go? <laughs> to be fair, I lived with humans my entire life, so... What? Do you know what a human is? Is that like a doll? <laughs> it's like it's like us, but taller. Oh, okay. Think of ugly elves. So darker skinned? It's like um, drow? Kind of points to himself. Like something along the lines of me. Oh, weird. Okay. Yeah. But they're they're notorious for being like he kind of thinks of the word. Uh, I'm trying to think of a uh, thieves can't term of it. Yeah. And he just says it in um dwarvish dicks. <laughs> wow it's insufferable I like it <laughs> do a quick investigation down this tunnel see mm -hmm. if there's uh, you you should see in there now um, it bends too much for you to see without going farther mm -hmm. well, given between the two I think this is this tunnel is the way we're looking to go so shall we Sounds like it. All right. Uh, 
He just like as he's leading the way, he's like, wait, wait, wait. before we go down, Ivy, you know these parts. Have you ever seen these tunnels? Um, when we passed by them. No one's ever ventured in, wondered what was in there, curious to look. Uh, um, Curiosity I've... gets you killed. This is true. This is the Underdark. Uh, also, do you speak Undercommon, Fergus? No. Yes. Oh, He's speaking Dwarvish. Okay. You would actually see if she speaks Elven at first, too. But I bet she doesn't. Nah. Uh, she speaks Gnome, and she speaks Undercommon. <laughs> Yeah, he's speaking under common. Actually, let, me, let me double check. That's why I was saying with the, like, the thieves. Oh, this is like, the kind of campaign where we got to think about that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's why I'm saying. Yeah, yeah no, I'm sorry, I haven't only. said much. Because mm-hmm. I figured that entire previous exchange was an undercommon. Yeah, mostly. She did ask you that question in Dwarven. Mm. <laughs> um, and of course, you can commune with uh, her in Thieves Camp. Yeah. Because technically that works somehow. somehow. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna question it because that's yeah. really all I got to go on. Druidic makes more sense. Why yeah. everyone knows it? Because <laughs> it's magic. The magic of wanting to steal stuff. <laughs> thieves can. Anyway, when I'm leaving the wagon, I just look at her and, th- and thieves can't. I'm just like, if I die, tell my family I hate yeah. them. <laughs> you know what they say? Why make friends when you can steal them? Uh, I guess that didn't land. As you're walking away, she just leans forward and grabs Eski's tail and lifts it up and looks under and then rears back and lets go. <laughs> oh, if only Nogram was there to say I warned you. Yeah, that's the working end. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, out of character, there's not a lot of mammals down here. <laughs> I'm going to try to like, stealthy. Well, y'all know what Eski is. Has it been more than an hour since we first met her? Uh, it's been about two hours. Damn. All right. I, I was rounding up because, I mean, I walk about a mile and a half to work every day, and it takes me about 25 minutes, so you're difficult to rain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have real life overland experience. <laughs> right. <laughs> My emotions yeah. are difficult to rain. Brum's going to switch out his spear for his battle axe and pull his shield out at this point. Okay. So, I'll have a shield, but his uh, weapon will still be riding his hip. Yeah, I'll currently have my bow out, but I'm staying in the back of the pack, and I'm I rolled a stealth to kind of try to be quiet behind them. Mm-hmm. This stealth wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, everyone can give me stealth who wants to. Actually, yeah. Oh damn! Damn, son. Uh, don't forget, uh, check your armor to see if it's giving you disadvantage. Yeah. I've I got know, disadvantage. I, I, know I know mine isn't. Okay, I know Fergus yeah. isn't. I know some mediums does, but mine doesn't. Okay, so Nogrim is surprisingly doing well. Um, Freya is as well. Um, Freaking Thrum, I guess you just want to get busy. Because <laughs> you are just well, like, all right, let's do this. Yeah, He's talking. He's talking to the whole group as they're coming around. All right, now, around the corners, take Flanking sides. Now, don't don't step out too far into the opening before they see you. How did he survive this long? <laughs> I'm usually by myself, and I don't have you all talking the whole time. Time, time, <laughs> time, time, time. His it's ears like, are tremendous. I was whispering, but this it's, is it's, it's like it's like a chatterbox that tells other people that they talk too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Jesus, even the cleric was especially dumb. for disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Now that he sees that we're in a tunnel, he's going to put his battle axe away and pull the spear back out for a little length. It dead ends. Hold there, folks. Check I'm your backside. I'm, I'm looking at the ceiling while we're doing it and seeing if there's any yeah, webbing it, up top. It's, uh, where you are, it's just stalactites. Mostly smooth, too. Check in there. They might have tucked them into a crevice or a crab. Fun fact, I brushed up on geology for this campaign. <laughs> Do a perception to see if they're yep. stuck into a corner or anything. Will we get to imply stone cutting to this? Or like... Uh, it depends what you're trying to perceive. Webs on the wall. Um, no going to be looking for any sort of 
perhaps not mechanical, but some uh, fissures in the wall. Gotcha. Um, so go ahead and give me a perception. Perception instead of investigation. Oh yeah, you can use investigation. Sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, uh, be looking in this back room to see if there's if any. There's uh, a, I don't know if uh, stone cutting applies or not. Um, not in this case. Okay. So what are you doing, Fergus? And then I'll get to results. Oh, I was gonna say, back here. I'm looking to see if there's any like like other than our foot tracks of traffic. If anything's been here within the past couple hours. Uh, like, anything, like anything that's like freshly disturbed. Maybe, maybe, that... maybe it can't be a couple hours, but see if anything other than our foot track of it has been freshly disturbed. See, that's the tricky part about the Underdark. Is since there's no dirt, it's really hard to get tracks. It's all just mm. cave rock. You, but you said there was some kind of like spider silk and stuff. See if yeah, anything there was just like... one little strand of spider silk gotcha. that he was only able to perceive because of a natural frickin' 20. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> okay, um, never mind, never mind then. So, um... Delgrim, you're looking around for, like, uh, a natural crevice or something. Mm. Uh, Thrum, you're kind of being on the wary. Uh, but since you're kind of opening up with all your senses, you hear voices, Thrum. Kind of these screechy, scratchy little voices. It's like, what about this one? It looks juicy. It wiggles around. The other one goes, no, 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 brother. I do not like the wiggly ones. They, they thrash too much. Let this one rest. Soak up in juices. This one could be good. Ooh, yes. Um, and you kind of trace the direction of the voices. At the exact same time, um, Milgram notices a hole directly above you in the ceiling. About 15 feet up. Thrum would see or see or hear where the voices are coming from. See Nolgrim looking up, touch him on the shoulder and do the finger over his mouth, you know, the quiet sign and look back at Freya and say quiet and motion her in and motion the other or point to motion the others in. But keep doing the finger over your mouth sign. Kind of trying to convey quietly, get them to come <clears throat> here, and he'd point up. How high up are the ceilings here? Uh, it varies, but here it's about 15 feet. If Freya didn't go back there to get them, then Thrum will mm-hmm. walk back there to tell them and then come back, or motion them and do the quiet sign. Does anybody have a grappling hook? In fact, I do. Look at you. Might come in handy. Um, like, I open up my bag, and you see a crowbar. You see a bunch of cow traps. You see a thousand ball bearings, apparently. Cause that's the thing. <laughs> They're very small. Um, he's like, he, I have the rope. I have pittens to like n- nail into the stone. I have a crowbar in case we need to wedge something. I, here's a grappling hook, and I just toss it to uh, whoever asked for it. So Thrum would have looked at Nolgrim while they were all moving in and kind of made the motion to his ear, like, I hear something above us. Mm-hmm. Does Nolgrim point out the whatever he saw? You saw the hole as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, you followed the voices. How big is the hole? Um, It's large enough for a medium-sized creature to get through without any difficulty. I'm not going to try to give it a fine measurement, but you'll all be able to get through there. I just want to make sure we're not trying to get into a hole the size of like a baseball or something. No, no. With your dark vision, you can tell there's a larger cavern on the other side of it from here. It's maybe like a three <laughs> foot stone wall separating you and the cavern above. Gotcha. So, you visit their home rather than let them ambush here, huh? Just before. Oh, I mean, he's saying this as he's mm-hmm. starting to t- <clears throat> spin the grappling hook in preparation to throw it up. Yeah, let's go in and give him a. <laughs> Crash their party because I think the dinner guests don't want to eat or be eaten. The issue is though, if you throw the grappling hook up, what's to stop them from knocking it back down if they notice it? Tension in the line. We'll deal with it when we go. Go. Wait, wait. No. Yep. How about one of you give me a boost <laughs> up and I, can, I can like hook it up there and see if I can avoid notice while you're all climbing up. I hate I hate suggesting this, but. Are we going to try towering three dwarves? I mean, 
two of you and then one of you on top and then I can climb the rest of you. We could do that. Sounds like problem. Elvin. Sounds like Elvin speak to me, and Nolgren's just gonna try throwing it up. Okay. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really short for a uh, grappling hook, so I'm not gonna really make you roll for that. But give okay. me a stealth check uh, to see if you make it go clang. Yes, I do. Yep. <laughs> it comes off the like, ceiling and comes back down. <laughs> yeah, the time that happens, like I'm just pinching that my the bridge of my nose. <laughs> Uh, but it hooks on firmly. Uh, pull it tight, and I'm going up. No, girl, hold it tight. And Thrum is charging up. All right. Charges in. Uh, I had a, sh- a website somewhere that showed actions in 5e, because that if we're about to go into combat, that's where I'm going to really slow us down. Fergus just looks at um, Nogrim's like, sometimes discretion is a good thing. Um, that was an option, sure. and then he's going to try crawling up. Yeah, and then after Nolgrim, Frey is going to go. Yeah, I'm going to go last. So, Nolgrim, you get up there. Mm-hmm. You see, oh, he's, yeah, sorry, I always forget how far your dark vision is. You can... Does he have extra dark vision? Well, you've got 60 feet. That's that's mm-hmm. plenty of dark vision. Oh, uh, yeah. I thought Nolgrim had more. Oh, sorry, not Nolgrim. I was thinking of Thrum, sorry. Uh, Nulgrim has extra dark vision, but either way, this place is pretty small. You guys can see all of this. Just kind of like motions the two of them, like after the larger family. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thrum and Nulgrim are going to need to clear the hole, otherwise, they all won't be able to get out. So, move forward. Imagine Thrum. Sorry, a step ahead of you. Yeah, sure. Put put yourself where you're going to be. Okay. Actually, and then he would have, as soon as he came up, he would have put his foot on the grappling hook and turned around and just held the position, so he'd be right there. Okay. And, when, and once Nolgrim's up, he draws his uh, shield mm-hmm. that keeps his weapon at his side. No checks needed to climb up. No, it, it's 15 feet. It's pretty low. Um, I think this is a place I could stay, like right here, like right up against the wall. Yep. And I'm going to roll... I imagine I just need to roll stealth again after that awful stealth of throwing the grappling hook. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. Who's taking the leap first? I'm always waiting for Nolgrim to take the lead. Why not? Fortune favors the bold. But he will try stealthing again. Mm-hmm. For what's worth. Yeah, that's about right. Yep. yep. Alright, so... um, Okay, stop moving for a second. Um, Nolgrim... From your perspective, come on, that's not the reveal tool. I do have 80 foot. Vision. You see a bunch of cocoons on a giant web kind of wiggling around. Mm. One of them is very still, but the three three others you can see are all tied up. Whew, I oh. thought those were orcs. I was like, shit, we yeah. went in the wrong cave. <laughs> oh, Grim is going to turn his guys to gaze to the ceiling. Um, just in time, too. All right. One on Nelgrim. Uh, 24 to hit. Yep, Ooh. that'll definitely hit. And one on, um, Thrum. 16. That one, act, uh, 23, because it has advantage. Actually, these all have advantage because they're surprise rounding. Oh, yeah, that hits. Uh, I thought I said this down. Uh, no, I I forgot to set the very. So yeah, uh, and allow me to reveal these two. So there was one in this corner. This is the one that webbed, because these are they are like these globs of projectile webs that fling <laughs> out of the shadows. One wraps around um, Milgram. You're restrained. Um, Thrum, <laughs> you're directly underneath it. <laughs> oh god. They were on the ceiling. Mm-hmm. Wrestle it, bro. Um, so um, they're about I'm 15 gonna... feet. They're each about 15 feet up. Uh, so you're restrained. Let me look at my guide to remind you what restrained is. And then while I, that was their surprise round action. So you guys can start rolling. I thought restrained was like, you can't move and you have disadvantage, but I can't. Uh, your sure. speed becomes zero. You can't benefit from any bonus of speed attack rolls against you have advantage and you have disadvantage on all attack rows and dexterity saving throws. All right. And then I need to Let's make sure I Oh you forgot to click on Thrum's token before you rolled initiative. 
God, I love the 5e sheets because they come up so fast. I know. I know. They're a lot easier. Oh, wow. I got a pretty good staggered uh, initiative rolls for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, When everyone's on the sheet, let me know. Can you 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 need to add Thrum? Oh, right. Because a 19 when I'm webbed is not worth losing. Sometimes you can just re-roll it and then edit it in the sheet afterwards. Yeah. Say, hey, I'm rolling a second time to add it to the sheet. Gotcha. Good point. All right. Everyone ready? Mm-hmm. All right. First one is one of the spiders. Uh, it's this one over here. Goes, well, 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 brother. It looks like we have more prey. This will be quite a feast after all. And it's going to scamper down off the ceiling because it's got. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's got enough. Um, and we'll close in, and I'll take a just a just a little nibble on uh, Delta. Diggy diggy hole. I was wondering why I heard that song. Yep. I was listening to it earlier. That'll hit my armor class of seventeen. Okay. Uh, ba ba. And then, if I remember correctly, okay, yeah. So you take eight piercing damage. <laughs> Ouch. Well, I'm dead. Yeah. And then you have to make a DC saving throw <laughs> to, take, uh, to not get poisoned. Uh, constitution? Yeah, constitution. Remember, you have an advantage because you're dwarf. You pass. So you okay. take no poison damage, I think, for that. Yeah, it's, it, yeah spider venom <clears throat> is either all or none. So you're you're at 1 HP, but you're up. No, that's yeah, good it could have been a lot worse. It could have yeah. been a lot worse. <laughs> yes, very much so. All right. Um, and unfortunately, I used my one spell for the day. That Did was. Ha- oh yeah, it expired. Yep, less than an hour. That's why I asked. All right, but it's your turn now. <clears throat> well, uh, imagine it takes an action to break free of the web. Yeah, it's a. Um, I you can either I, attack it or um, you try to break free. Yeah, my initiative didn't stick, so. I need to go after. <coughs> Fuck okay. it. Don't have time to break free when the enemy is right in front of me. Fucking kick your ass and take a swing at him. Okay, you have disadvantage, and then it's actually yep. Thrum's turn. But oh, it is. Yeah, but he his for some reason his did stick. Um, that's gonna miss. Yeah, even it's with gonna disadvantage. Miss. Yeah, even yeah. With disadvantage. Shit! I'm surprised it's not. Uh, that was supposed to prompt me. Let me check. I'll figure I that out. Put but... Query. <clears throat> of the... Yep. Um. Oh yeah, a little oh, icon. Advantage tile. Okay, I see. There's okay. Uh okay, yeah, so Thrum, it's your turn. Thrum is going to do a strength check to break free. Yep. That's an action. Mm-hmm. Uh do I just click on strength? Just click on strength. Okay. Oh yeah, you bust right out of this. <laughs> Alright. And then and can you disengage as a move? Um, technically, he only has a five foot attack range, so he's not. If you moved, you wouldn't provoke because he's fifteen feet on the ceiling. Mm-hmm. All right, so Thrum is going to get a little bit better positioning. So this guy falling down, right? Nope, that's not it. Let go too fast. All right, there we go. Yep. And you don't take any attacks of opportunity for that. And I don't think I have bonus actions yet. No. Okay. All right. Freya. Okay. Everyone is very cramped in here. Welcome to the Underdark. Okay. Um, do, do attack of opportunities work the same way? It's only uh, whenever you move out of a threatened yeah. square. Whenever you move out of a threatened square. However, the one you're adjacent to right now is currently on the ceiling, so you mm-hmm. would not provoke an attack from it, because it's only got five foot of attack. Oh, right. so it can, only attack, it can only attack directly beneath it? Yeah, five feet away. I'll put a little blue dot on it. Okay, so I'm technically ten feet or something? You have fifteen feet up to make it easy. Okay. Um, I'm going to, or, come over here, mm-hmm. and then thunderclap this one. Okay. 
Is a thunderclap an AOE? Oh no, that's, that's around you. Around yeah. you. Like yeah, it's five, five feet around, around me. That's why I was talking about how everyone. Okay, was cool. Mm. Um, all right. So put that spell up. Doesn't need to do like a saving throw or anything. A uh, Constitution save. Constitution save. Ooh, natural one. <laughs> Roll damage. Hey, you taking thunder damage? Um, let's see. Take one d six thunder damage. Okay, I guess let's roll a d six. Mm-hmm. It, it oh. increases your level. Yeah. Ooh, five. Nice. Yeah, it it screeches as you you hit it with that thunder damage. So the the way that looks to you guys is um on on like Freya's glove or something, right? A rune starts to light up and it it, it glows uh so much until it finally bursts into the one hundred foot radius of noise that you hear and a thunderbolt gets shot out of uh, Freya's hand as she snaps her fingers do we all take damage from that nope only it's a uh, only five foot radius of damage but a hundred feet of you hearing it of noise okay I misread that so Nivy Ivy hears that <laughs> um, I think that's fair to say yeah. it just makes me think of the runes that you have have has anyone watched one piece yeah do you know the dials they get from Skypea <laughs> it makes me think of that. Oh yeah, yeah, it's very similar to that. All right, uh, I believe that's Fergus's turn. Yeah. Um, just a question. So before I roll, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to yep. attack this one. Does he see me? Because I had rolled a stealth of 15. Uh, he does not see you. So I get advantage on the attack. They only had um, like they were pretty occupied with what they were doing before until the natural one <laughs> on throwing the yes. thing up, and that's when they scale into an ambush. So. I step up over here, and I'm going to make an attack with my short bow with advantage. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's hit. super hits. So he takes 11 points of damage. Ooh, he is feeling that big time. He is what we'd call bloodied. And then I step back into the corner. <laughs> yep. He He's aware of that the arrow came from that now. Oh, yeah, but... he knows that I'm, yeah. like, I'm not hidden anymore. <clears throat> but yeah, I was able to get advantage on that attack. So that's my turn. No fancy bonus actions yet. Yep. All right. One second. Okay. Uh, the one that's on the ground that's just been getting the... Uh, it got thunderclapped and then it got arrowed in probably one of its eight eyes. It's very freaky how many eights there are on a spider. By the Sorry. way, that's the 20 initiative one that's on the ground, so he's not yeah. the one that goes this yep. turn. Um, it goes... Ah, Arazak, come lift your weight, brother. And the one on the ceiling goes, fine, fine, I'll... And it starts um, scuttling down off the ceiling, and it'll shift up here. It is now on the ground, and it is going to try to take a nibble at Taskel. Mm-hmm. Bite. I sounded so worried. Oh, oh shit. Shit. Pass shit. that get... saving throw. <laughs> the Otherwise game is we're, trying to we're kill us. <clears throat> <laughs> I think we're down a cleric either way. That's well, technically, you're not, you're not instant dead. You're just doing death saving throws. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Don't worry about the poison damage. The critical hit would probably just polish you off. Well, it, I think it's still important that he passes that save because oh, yeah, the, yeah. the secondary you, text. You do have advantage on it. <clears throat> Level one is surprisingly Dark Souls. I'll just say that. Yeah, yep, yeah, very mm-hmm. much so. Yeah. Yep, yeah, you're good. So, so he only takes fourteen, so he's down to zero. Uh, All yeah, right. you're down to zero and doing death saving throws. Speaking of, mm-hmm. um, give me a flat one d twenty roll. <laughs> Things are surprisingly really strong. Yep, you get a success towards stabilization. All right. Uh, now this one is going to try to disengage and scuttle back into its little hole. It does not like the amount of damage it's taking. Mm-hmm. All right. Thrum. All right, in kind of a whirling action, Thrum is going to say, that's my brother-in-law, and drop his shield, stab his 
spear into the ground as a move action while twirling around, pulling out his battle axe with two hands and coming down on top of this thing. All right. Uh, let me check. And missing. <laughs> nope, that just hits. It, it literally equals its AC. <laughs> Takes a nice smooth seven slashing damage. Not liking that in the slightest. Algrim. Fuck with these with us dwarves is gonna be the last thing you ever do. And he will uh, use his uh um grudge blade grudge on the one that's trying to flee. Yep. And then he's going to hit him with the Eldritch Blast that oh. appears as a sort of uh, ethereal uh dwarven knuckled fist with like nice. brass knuckles. Uh attack roll at disadvantage because you're still yep. trained. Yep, yep. Uh, let's see. I think that's intelligence based, right? Yeah, it's intelligence. I suppose. I'm getting weirdly think... great rolls for these people, and that's worrying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that just. Okay. Um, um, if you add Eldritch Blast in the uh, roll 20 thing, it should make an attack thing on your front page. I'm not seeing it. Uh, so. uh, yeah, for some reason it did. Um, okay. Um, I'll just do. Intelligence roll. Plus your uh, intelligence plus your proficiency bonus. Yeah, so this plus two. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. Uh, Wiz is passed. Um, I think that's... I can't do anything with my move action, so that's my turn. Mm-hmm. Freya. Freya is going to run back, and I'm going to use my axe to try and slash open... The uh, what what's keeping you restrained? Oh, nice. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Flat attack. Uh, let me scroll back up. Uh, yeah, AC ten. Five hit points. Yeah, five hit points. Probably shouldn't be showing you that, but oh well. (laughs) Go ahead. No, I I would say this is probably an advantage situation. Okay. Well then, in that case, do I do I click the hand axe underneath it again? Or? Yeah, just, no, no, the hand axe underneath it's for damage. Roll the okay. um, attack again, separate. Okay. There you go. Now roll hand axe damage. Yes, max. <laughs> <laughs> well, not max. Uh, uh, no, max, max. That's max damage. <laughs> yep. So, uh, do you do you not have any dex or um, strength modifiers? I have dex, not strength. Um, uh, uh, hand axes are... gets add dex. No, no, they're not finesse. Um, if it's, I thought that certain weapons, even if they're not finesse, you can still use them. You can no, you can't add uh, dex to damage if it's not finesse. Um. Okay. Well. Whatever yeah, it doesn't but, matter. Either way, um, it opens yep, up yep. your bonds. Yep. Uh, much, much thanks to you, Les. All right, Fergus. <clears throat> um. Gonna stick my head out. Don't see the one I was trying to target anymore. Um, so he's just gonna go for the one closest. Making a t- this one's not gonna be an advantage because he knows he's on there. Yep. But I'm pretty sure you still get sneak attack. Um, yeah, because, I do. Yeah. So that hit. will hit for another eleven damage. Ooh, yeah. It, it's that smarts really badly. Um, and he's just gonna call out. Um. So I can't really think of what he would say, but basically saying that um, you better get back here, we're going to kill your little brother. Or big brother, whatever the fuck this ugly thing is. <laughs> I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, let me roll. Okay, wow. Their webs are not recharging. <laughs> That's a good thing for us. Yep. Um... You pissed it off, pissed him off a good deal uh, there, Fergus. So it's gonna try to uh, scuttle up along the wall to get like around behind you like this, but it will provoke an AOO from Thrum. I don't believe it will from you, Fergus, because you've got a ranged weapon. Yeah, Runic. Oh, I don't have any of that. Oh stuff yeah, stuff. and um, Nilgrim. Nilgrim. And Frey, if she has a weapon out. Oh yeah, it has a hand. So everyone gets an AOO. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you, you, you cling into the wall. No oh, shit. The war pick rams home. All right. Click the hand axe to roll damage. 
I want to try something. I'm going to click my damage just to see where it shows up, but obviously I didn't hit. Uh, it would have been cool if it had shown up under my roll. <laughs> okay, so what this... L- l- let me describe this to you guys. Basically what happens is is Fergus shoots it with an arrow on the side of its, I guess, head, and he taunts it, and it goes to turn around around and he goes you little and then uh freya you come in and you cut off one of its front mandible legs with your hand axe and it slumps forward because its weight is disbalanced and then um milgrim comes in and just hooks his war pick through one of its eyes and it comes out the other side and you have slain it and thrum swings wildly and clicks into a wall (laughs) so just shouts out i told you that's how we do it um, Very good. Other one. Freya is going to uh, shout out for everyone to go after the other spider and that she's going to help Tasco. Mm-hmm. Sounds good to me. That's saving throw, Tasco. Mm-hmm. Thrum would. Oh, I guess we're still in turn order. An- yeah, yeah, we still got one more. Another uh, success. Just one more and you'll be stabilized. All right. Jeez. Oh, the IRL dice are rolling badly, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, it's going. This last one is going to turn around and it's going to pluck one of these deep gnomes. And it's holding it. It's like little front mandibles. And it says, you killed my brother, but come no closer or the little gnome dies. And it like bears its like mandibly fangs. Mm-hmm. What language is it speaking? Undercommon. So, so only Thrum and Nolgrim understand what it's saying. Yep. Yeah. What Thrum's up? Thrum is going to pick up his spear, say, maybe we can talk, and chunk the sp- throw the spear at it. Okay. Cool. <laughs> maybe we can talk. <laughs> Give me that attack roll. I'm pretty I sure. I guess it would be. The one-handed spear attack? Because you can use strength, yeah. right? Throwing yeah. stuff? Yeah. yeah, it would be a one-handed. Alright. Come on, money shot. That hits. Roll damage. Oh, nice. It is so grievously wounded. You go, like, deep into its thorax, and it's gushing its kind of strange, greeny ichor-like blood, and it's barely hanging on. You have yourself a deal. I'm not going to move any closer and throw another Eldritch Blast at him. Mm-hmm. Are you sure, like, firing it from your hand or, like, from your war pick or something? From my, just kind of just extended a hand and a fist. Basically, he's throwing a punch, but yeah. from his fist is another dwarven fist that just... Nice. Uh, that will be... Yeah, I gotta make a macro for it, so um, I'll just roll intelligence for now and add two to it. Try adding the spell into the spell thing again and see if it'll make it. Cause so, sometimes it has an issue, but using God that stuff. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> Every time. Never fails. Uh, roll damage for that attack, because you, you hit the null. Oh, God. <laughs> Three damage. It, don't worry, it's still alive. This just isn't working out for me. It's just, it's just you, the dwarven just flies and hits the cocoon right where the stomach would be. And you go, <laughs> Good thinking, Nogrim. Take out the hostage. <laughs> oh, God. He has no bargaining chip. Freya. Freya yells, Fergus, you need to take out that spider now. And then cure wounds on. If it not, it's yeah. not. Yep. Hit it again. Well, 20's having some issues lately, yeah. so. Hit it again. It's a, it's a D8 plus your casting modifier. Yeah, you can always just roll that until whatever is going on resolves. It'll probably be fixed next time we play. It's yeah, just, it's, you know, it's, it's it's just not working. It like, yeah, just roll uh, 1D8 plus your casting stat, which is your intelligence. 1D8 plus 3 on Tascal. <laughs> I mean, it's four damage, but it gets them back awake. <laughs> yeah. All right, there, brother in law, get up now. Fergus. 
I'm going to step over here and pull out another arrow and just kind of try to aim to not hit the guy and fire. Yep. Ooh, that yes. one's going to hit home. Damn. Oh, not sneak attack, but yes, um, the four first, damage. The first six is enough to kill it. You just put it right into one of its eyes, and like the entire arrow just disappears inside the eye socket, and the entire thing just slumps forward, and it drops this guy who rolls for like a foot before he sticks to the floor. Yeah. Um, as um, soon as like as soon as he's down, I'm gonna run over to start getting ready to um, cut him away. But we're still in, I'm not sure if we're still in combat. Yeah. No. No. You guys won. Yeah. yeah so Freya grabs Tasco by the arms and says, "Come on, we're gonna need your help to get them up again." Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna see about cutting the binds of the webbing off of this guy. And since the creature that I cursed died, I get my work luck level plus my intelligence modder and hit points back. Woo-hoo. So, take those five hit points. Freya's coming in there and starting to cut people free. Yeah. Rum's going to be cautiously looking overhead as they do that and checking around to make sure there isn't another spider in here. And to be fair, you guys killed like two Shelob sized spiders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was I mean, I was lucky to get sneak encounter. attack on both of them. And we're moving them. I'm gonna spit yeah. on the one that bit me and mutter curses about the servants of the enemy. Mm. Rome will take a minute to say, uh, see there, laddies? That's what I'm saying. These porkas down here are not like you've ever seen up top. Gotta always keep your wits about you. Good work, Nogrim. Fergus. That was mighty impressive shooting. Thanks, I learned it from an elf. Uh, out of character, Richard, is that true? Yes. That it, <laughs> oh my he, god. He learned how to fence from a human and learned how to shoot from an elf. Uh, okay. Like, I, I even said his rapier, or short sword at least, is of human make and his bow is clearly of elven make. I'll say this. I've observed many animals over the years. Learn from everything. Only the strongest survive. Uh, um, uh, Fergus, uh, you cut the webs off of this one down here on the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's he's pretty roughed up, but he's conscious. Yeah, I, I, I after I cut him free, I kind of put the blade back in the sheath, and I don't know how to speak under comments, so I just kind of put it in my hands and say in Dwarven, friend, friend, friend. He says in Dwarven, <laughs> what, what hit me in the stomach? One of the spiders. Ah, uh, didn't know Skiz wrong with that cruel. Yes, um, they're also not very subtle. <laughs> kind of staring back at him. <laughs> no girl <girl's> shrug. <laughs> uh, um, is is one of you the sheriff? Um, he's speaking in Dwarven, but he doesn't see know if they understand him. Like, can anyone translate for me? Jesus. I could translate I, what you uh, want to say. The one that you cut out says, I, I speak Dwarven pretty well. He says Dwarven. Yeah, thank goodness. Um, is one of you the sheriff, or um, we got word from, um, what's your name? Something steals your dagger. I said it's in character. He just says, it's, it's yeah. something steals your dagger. <laughs> Already has your dagger. Yeah. Uh, you, you mean Ivy? Yes. Yeah, her. Uh, Ivy, Ivy. The little cur didn't abandon us? Didn't think she'd actually get help. And he's like trying to get up, but it's not working because he's still pretty numb. Yeah. Uh, the sheriff help is... Him prop himself up. Mm-hmm. No, the... It was mostly luck. <sighs> yeah, sounds right. The, the sheriff is in that pod there. The dead one? Yeah, if you open it up, it's just a withered husk. Um, He still has like gear and stuff, but... Freya, Freya yells back uh, for Taskal to... Inspect for the lingering effects of poison. Mm-hmm. We want to make sure they don't die before we get them home. Um, Fergus would be doing that thing that you kind of do with people who've been um, stunned or like been paralyzed for a while, where he starts yeah. helping the guy move his like limbs, yeah, trying to get the feeling back. We're we're in debt to you, strangers, for this this timely rescue. Well, I mean, to be to be fair, the, like what um, 
my family said this is all pretty dumb luck, but I'm, ha- I'm happy to say that the dumb luck was on our side this time. Yeah. Uh, oh. I couldn't think of what I would say, but I can't think of anything. Faster Vault could be using a little luck. Thank you. She, Ivy mentioned you are on departing that place. Is there a reason? Well, the, the sheriff could right, right. Uh, he's like it's obvious. Like he's still kind of processing. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we were going deeper in to go to. Hold on, I need to look actually what the name of this thing is. We were going to uh, Vaudenhammer, the the. the Sivilbin stronghold, deep tunnel, that direction. And he gestures in like the direction you guys were coming from, basically mm-hmm. the opposite direction that you're headed, to see about requesting aid for Haversvald. Is someone attacking it, or is it under like not, did something happened? Not yet, but soon. Listen, just I'm happy to explain, but let's get my fellows down and. Just give me a moment to catch my breath and uh, everything. Yeah, I was going to ask for his name. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, can, you can come up with one later if you don't have one ready. I was going to say, um, yeah, Freya has been cutting people down this whole time. Uh, most are conscious, but there's a few that are out. Um, you already see the two that are dead. No, Grom will go over there and start cutting people three as well. <sighs> uh, man, the, the one that you're talking to says, I'm... Uh, Kidge, uh, Kidge often seen. Kidge often seen. Yes. Nice. Um, so we have a wagon down below. It, um, once you all are better, you could walk alongside us to determine where we're going to go. I, we don't have really much room in the wagon to like haul people, but with the sheriff passed on, we should return to Hazard's Vault. Well, we were heading in that direction anyway, right? And he like turns back to throw him because he's not really sure. Yeah. Oh. I that we're doing, but we can have the courtesy of carrying the dead. We've got room in the wagons. I imagine they have family and folk. Yes. 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 While they're like getting their feelings back in their limbs and stuff when they're yeah. getting dead free, uh, Fergus is also gonna like to make it easier for them to get down. He's gonna use the pittens and another rope and kind of make a makeshift um, rope ladder to kind of get down easier. Yeah, like basically use the second rope to kind of make knots to like step down with. Just just make it easier for people. Not really anything and like fancy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. Okay. Or, or what's anyone else doing? Are you looking around or anything? Yeah. Might yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. Definitely. They're obviously ambush predators, so they've got to have a stash. Yes. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I, forgot, I forgot all about stashes. If you <laughs> are um, looking at Sheriff Gunther's body, uh, I imagine you were when you are checking his wounds. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got like this metal badge pinned to his, he doesn't even have armor. It's just normal clothes. Um, that looks like it's some sort of sign of officialness. Uh, he's also got a mithril ring on one of his fingers. That's got a little writing in gnomish. And he's also got a, uh, short sword. I know. Does the, uh, sheriff have a family? Uh, I, his wife, uh, asked Martha. Uh, that's not going to be a nice conversation. Did did Freya look like she was going to take any of that stuff? I don't think from the way you're playing it, Michael, that she would, would you? No. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see here. Oh, Maybe. yeah, the- He's also got a uh, an iron key that's got a single gnome character chiseled on the top of it. Are there any other remains here that aren't part of this uh, this group? Uh, there is one pod of webbing that does not quite look like a humanoid shape. Lorgrim's going to check that one out. 
Okay. Uh, cover your nose, son. That might reek. I mean, it's probably a dried-up husk by now if they've drained it. Mm. Uh, when you cut it open, various bones fall out. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are some other items. Uh, some of it are just like useless kind of like baubles, the triviality that the two uh, Skizrael might have found interesting. But inside, you do find a like black silt silk coin pouch and a great axe that you can just tell by looking at it uh, is of dwarven design. Hmm. Do these bones look like they would be dwarven? Uh, give me a nature check. Or a medicine. Either one. Uh, nature. Yep, that's about right. I've been uh, rolling human, shit. <laughs> humanoid, non-animal. Okay. <laughs> Very old by the look of it. Mm -hmm. Any idea who this might have belonged to? You'd look at the uh, deep gnomes. The one that you could talk to most shakes his head. That's a right fine axe there, son. It is of dwarven make, so it is only right it returns to its people. And he'll also peek into the pouch. Um, Inside the pouch is... Uh, let's see. Um, Inside the pouch is 20 coins of a metal that's a little hard to tell in dark vision. Uh, okay. But if you take one out and look at it, Mm -hmm. uh, on one side, it's got like a spider you know, on it, mm -hmm. and on the other side, it's got a web, and inside the bag is a little folded up parchment note. Well, Grum's going to take the note, and I probably can't read it without light, huh? Uh, no, you can read it without dark, uh, um, without light, because dark okay. vision just doesn't show colors. Oh, okay. Uh, but it is elvish. Hey, Sorry to interrupt, Gumbo. In your world, dark vision is everything black and white. Yeah, that's what it specifically says in mm. the player's handbook. Is it that says it in Pathfinder too. Yeah, it just doesn't show color. So you, sure. so the parchment is probably like a tan or a white-ish with black ink. So it's you can read that. You mm. just can't immediately you. tell. You could probably give like a roll to determine what the material of the coin is if you want. Mm. Um. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Uh, intelligence check? Um, I would say an intelligence check with stone cunning. Okay, so this plus two. Uh, you, you, like, you take a sniff of it, you do that nice dwarven thing where you bite the coin, it doesn't bend, um, and take a quick lick. Uh, these are platinum pieces. 20 Ooh. platinum pieces. Nice. Are any of the gnomes still up here? Uh, no, they've all been cutting down. I just I can just move you guys back to the main map. You're basically yeah. Here. Uh, no, no, Grum. I've got a chest to keep valuables in. It's pretty heavy. Might not be able to be lifted very easily. You're welcome to put them in there. But I'd say ask one of our folks here if they know if this is their currency or if it's even more valuable. What does the note say? It might say something about who it belongs to. Ah, uh, yes. Uh... And that's something I could read. How about you? And he would hand it over to mm -hmm. Fergus. I um, mean, Fergus does speak Elven, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can read it. Um, I will say your experience with reading Elven is this, you could tell this is like a slightly different dialect. Mm -hmm. So it's not High Elven like what you're used to. Yeah. Uh, all it says is uh, Hail Safia, Baroness of Voyeth. Um, I'll have you type that out eventually yeah. so we can yeah. get the spelling correctly. <laughs> Oh, Safe, um, sorry. He would uh, hand out four platinum to everybody in our dwarven group. Share the wealth. So each of you get four platinum. Uh, I haven't had a coin in my pocket in many weeks. Thank you, son. Um, do any of the names strike out to something I would know? No, it's it's all Greek to you. Okay. Do you what what? Oh, nice use of that. It, it, does this... Uh, does... uh. He would ask, no girl asked the gnomes, does this name sound familiar? And he would repeat it. I don't know who Sathis is, Sathe is, but uh, Voyaths is the drow fortress on the far side of the fungal jungle. <laughs> the fungal jungle. <laughs> and that's what they called it in the book. I'm I, love it. I, like it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> is that Queef <clears throat> Canyon or... Oh god. Let's not start on that again. Hey, hey, hey. This one I didn't name. 
Um, by the way, before we had left the cave, would I be able to retrieve any of my arrows, or are they all just broken when I use them? Um, I use three. How, how many? Um, let roll a one d three for me. One d three minus one. Uh, yeah, you actually managed to get two back. I imagine they hit their their soft parts of their exoskeleton. Yeah. And one just shattered. The one that went all the way into its spider brain that was lost to you. <laughs> you. Uh, but yeah, the um, what did I say his name was? Uh, Cridge. Uh, said, yeah, no, uh, Voice is a, a, a drow fortress on the far side of the fungal jungle. It's one of the predominantly places, predominant locations in, uh, Upper Azathir. How friendly would they be to our kind? <clears throat> <clears throat> They're drow. <laughs> that's what all he says. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what I was expecting, but nothing, nothing wrong with double checking. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess now's a good time to start heading back to your home, huh? Yeah. Yes, that would be good. We would all load up in the wagon. Um, yeah. Fergus would actually not take a seat and let one of the wounded people take it. I was yeah. going to say, Thrum would uh, make sure the two bodies are laid nicely in the wagon. Yeah. Um, anyone who We probably could take a short rest while we're like doing the scavenging. Yeah, stuff probably like a short it. rest would be uh, what you were doing when they yeah. were taking their time to heal. Okay. Yeah, so anyone who's wounded could roll their hit die. Hit die because I, I know our cleric was pretty wounded there, and I think mm-hmm. the warlock was too. Hey, Fergus, says it. You're a bard, right? No, no. I'm a rogue. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So before that's why I was doing crazy right. damage. Fair. Yep. What classes get their, their spells back after a short rest? Warlock and that's wizard it. for an extent. Uh, I don't think the warlock. Does. Yes, they do. They do. They get all um, their spells back after a short huh. rest. Huh. That's the upside to having such um, a small supply. Yeah. Of stuff. Well, sure, I probably would have spell. Well, no, we didn't rest along the way, so fair. But that's very good to know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you and wizards can get a certain certain amount of spells lo- back, levels back equal to their half their level. Mm-hmm. So, like level two, they could get um, one first level spell slot back. That kind of thing. But yeah, but the, that, no, need compl- much it. no one's a wizard, so we don't need to complicate that. Yeah. But and there's some druids. So if someone wants a class of druid, make sure your subclass yeah. doesn't tell you or not. I think, I think there's, there's like two. All right, so it's pretty rare to get yeah. back on a short it rest. Is. Most everything's long. Oh shit, that's awesome. That's very good to know. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. man, that's... one spell per day does not go well. That's <laughs> the strength of a warlock. <laughs> yeah, that's that's super nice. You can, you can double barrel it. Yep. And uh, Richard, anyone mm-hmm. else who's familiar with Fabi, whenever y'all see an opportunity for a short rest, please call. Out that, because, well, that's why I was doing it this time. Yeah, I forgot us, we were, us newbies will never think of it. No, so like sometimes it's going to sound like I'm kind of meta gaming, but it's more I'm trying to refresh everyone's memory about the rules. So just tell me if I'm going too far with that combo. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to remind the character. Yeah, well, character. I, I'm going to try to do that too. But, but there's going to be sometimes my character's not hurt at all or something. Yeah, and everyone else is beaten up because I'm going to be hiding a lot, especially once we hit level two. <sighs> Because I can bonus action hide. So when you guys actually get back to the um, wagon with all the deep knowns in tow. Oh, crap. Is she there? Yeah, she's there. She's just like, she's got like her feet up on the side. Yeah, I would have known if she had taken off with any of our stuff too anyway. Yeah. Is Eski there? Yeah. The no, she's there too. Okay. Good. Grand Theft Yak. <laughs> yeah, she sees, she sees you guys coming because actually her dark vision is farther than yours. And she generally looks surprised. She's like, holy... Wow. Jesus. Well, I, I guess he succeeded. Uh, don't look too surprised. I got a couple of lucky shots in. And then um, and he points to the people that finished off the um, first one. They're the ones that really finished off most of it. It was a team effort. Mm-hmm. But uh, She turns mm-hmm. to uh, some of the other gnomes that are lipping out. She goes... Well, glad to see you're all all right. And they just walk past and don't say anything. And she's like, good talk. Ivy. Yeah. Come here. Do your people have any type of burial traditions we should know of? Two of them didn't make it. Um, they bury them in the fields. Uh, underneath um, the fungus. That we then get our food out of. Mm, dirt to dirt. I respect that. Uh, we've brought them down. 
uh, to return them to their families with their items so that they may intern them the way that they do. Eh, I assume the sheriff bought it. He got hit pretty good when they attacked the first time. Aye, he was one of the slain. They pointed him out and uh, he's got the uh, law badge on him, so I assume that is him. Yeah. And you said the Skizrael were dead? Yes. I mean, you only saw two of them when you were attacked. Yeah, I only saw saw two. Then yes. You, You normally never see them out this far. What do you mean? Where are they normally? Bungle jungle. The more I hear about this place, the less funny it sounds. Like, that's in character, by the way. Yeah. Has anything been changing down here lately that would drive them out? I don't know about driving them out, but, I mean... The, the new Lord and Fasterval, he's... <laughs> he, he, he's an idiot. A champion of chumps. I don't imagine that has anything to do with the skiz round, but that's why the drow were so interested all of a sudden. The drow, you say? Um, at this point, um, Cridge comes up and goes, if it's all the same to you, friends, perhaps we should get moving? Yes, I believe. Uh... Quicker Indeed. we can get there, the quicker we can rest up. Yep. So I imagine that's the end of session one. Yep, that'll be the end of the session one. 